Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto has harem get banished from Konoha. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Yaokai no Hurricane and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1 Exile Much of Konoha's ninja populace waited anxiously at the village gates for the Sasuke retrieval squad to return. Most wished Sasuke safety. Some wished for the whole team to be safe. Few wished for Naruto to return alive. Many of these thoughts varied but for Naruto, the only thing that mattered was to keep his promise to Sakura, more so alive than dead. Then he could see the looks on every doubter's face at the fact the bane of Konoha has defeated the genius, Ichiha Sasuke. That would be nice. What many people didn't know about Naruto was that he was very intelligent. He knew that with his status, he could not afford to look as smart as he was because of the reasoning that a smart demon was a dangerous demon. And even then, that didn't always work. Humming from the ones who can't tell the difference of the container and the contained, let alone a human and a guardian. Naruto thought as he coughed up blood and continued his agonizing journey to Konoha. Yes, the infamous Biju were guardians, not demons. Careful kit. That gaping hole is a serious injury, so watch how you move your body. Kai would be advised. It would be easier if I didn't have my teammate on my back. Naruto strained out in his mind. Teammate. He wanted to kill you for his own gain. You should have never moved your Rasengan from his heart. The Ninetales growled angrily. Naruto smiled a bit and calmly stated, I had a promise to keep. But I don't want you to die in the process, Kit. The fox spoke softly. The Kitsune's host was touched. Oh, you do care. He thought with a small smile, becoming happy that the beast was concerned for him. The Guardian grinned mischievously. Of course I do. I don't want to die yet. The golden-haired boy's face contorted into a deadpan look. Should have known. He thought back dryly. Love you too, Kit. Chirped Kai Ubi, ending the conversation. As Naruto felt the Guardian's presence fade from his mind, the village gates start to come into his line of vision. The Kai Ubi Jinchuriki panted as he paused, fighting his aching body to continue moving. Come on we're almost there. Naruto said, motivating himself. He felt his consciousness slipping as he pushed himself harder to reach the gates of Konoha. As soon as he saw Tsunade, Kakashi, and Sakura, he smiled before coughing up more blood, the pain becoming unbearable as it knocked him unconscious. Naruto exclaimed Tsunade, going into medic mode. She quickly looked at Sasuke and started analyzing him. Many deep cuts on his sides, chakra burns, chakra exhaustion, left hand is near fried, and a bit of head trauma. The Hokage whispered to herself. Then she looked at Naruto and examined his current state. Open wounds, burns, chakra exhaustion, chakra burns, and a hole in his right lung. Much blood is lost and his pulse the Hokage place her fingers against his neck, feeling the blood pumps coming slower by a small margin. Her hazel eyes widened in shock. He's fading slowly. Kakashi. Carry Sasuke and follow me to the hospital. She ordered while gently picking up Naruto, running to the hospital at full speed. With Kakashi following suit, they both were on their way to the medical facility. Damn it. Kakashi thought heatedly to himself. Naruto if I wouldn't have taught him the Chidori, you wouldn't be in this condition. Regret began to shine in the silver-haired Jounin's uncovered eye. My dealings with you and Sakura were wrong. I, I favored Sasuke because I saw myself in him. Kakashi looked at his Jinchuriki student as he was being carried by the Hokage. I swear I'll make this up to you. No matter what it takes. Meanwhile, Sakura was conflicted with worry. Sasu Kun she thought, running to the hospital. Her jade eyes narrowed, grimacing as she thought about her other teammate. Naruto why did you try to kill him? She whispered bitterly to herself. You know I love him she ran to the hospital, praying that Sasuke would be alright. As the pink-haired Jenin ran to the hospital, an Anbu with a Nico mask was following the Hokage and the former Anbu captain to the hospital. Don't you dare die, Naruto-kun the masked Kinoichi thought in concern. She knew the golden-haired boy from the missions of trying to capture him whenever he did a large-scale prank, which happened quite often when he was at the academy. The woman knew that it was an act, and as time passed, she grew inquisitive of the boy, desiring to know more about him. Wanting to sedate that curiosity, she followed him one night. Flashback, after training for five hours straight, he tiredly went to the Hokage Monument and just sat down, staring at the full moon. By this time, she was already beyond impressed from his training. He's more skilled than what he shows. The Anbu thought, silently landing a few feet away from the golden-haired child. As she moved to get closer Naruto asked softly, is there something you want? He turned his head at her with melancholy eyes. I was just curious about you. She said simply. Naruto looked at the masked Kinoichi briefly, unsure if her reason was a genuine. Brushing her off, he chuckled and said, why? I'm the demon brat that everyone seems so fond of thinking. The purple-haired woman looked at the Kaiubi container calmly, understanding that he did not believe her. Some of your actions just seemed to be forced. 
The Nico woman replied in a gentle tone, catching the blonde's attention. Silence reigned for a moment. So you wanted to get to know me for yourself? The Jinchuriki asked with surprise and well-hidden hope. The prospect of this woman that could be a potential friend had given the blonde boy a bit of spirit, longing to have another person he could talk to maybe even cherish. The Kinoichi giggled quietly to herself. Yeah. Why not? If we have questions, just go to the source. Naruto's eyes lit up a bit. Well then, fire away Niko-chan. The Anbu moved and took a seat next to him, taking in the lunar shine of the illuminating planet above them. Why do you do the things that you do? The Ninetales host closed his eyes not wanting to show the emotions that swirled in them. He gave her a fox-like grin. Because I'm awesome like that. The Anbu shook her head, stopping the orange-clad male. That's what I'm talking about. You smile and move like everything is alright, but it isn't. Naruto became calmer, more distant, making the elite Kinoichi give him all of her attention. I hear the whispers. The child started. I know the village treats me differently from everyone else. I tried to figure it out. His blue eyes gazed upon the night sky. Some nights I can't sleep. The question forever running in my mind is there something wrong with me? Do they know something about myself that I'm unaware of? Anger flashed across his face. If so, why won't they tell me instead of criticizing me and calling me all these absurd names? At least have the nerve to say it to my face. The cad operative looked at the whiskered cheek boy, sympathetic that he had been pushed that far. The fox's jailer continued, it began to eat at me. But one day, I just decided to let it go. The woman stared at him, beckoning the child to explain. I quit trying to understand them because they won't take the time to understand me. So I decided to smile, trying to find the positive side of things. I smile to show that I'm stronger than their words. That I'm unfazed by their hate. That I'm not alone like they think I am a smile of resignation formed on the Jinchuriki's face. The purple-haired Anbu allowed a softer expression on her masked visage. Don't you have a friend that you can go to? Naruto sighed and began swinging his legs from the ledge. I do, but he has to tend to everyone, and I don't want to be a bother. The Kinoichi looked back at the lunar planet above them before she asked, who is he? The blonde childs gave a serene smile. Here is Njiji, the Hokage. The female ninja couldn't help herself as she giggled from the name. Doesn't he get mad when you call him that? She asked. The blue-eyed boy turned his gaze to her, grinning foxily. Sometimes, but that's okay. The golden-haired boy moved on to the next question, calmly looking at the woman's mask. So, any more questions? The shinobi held her gaze with the child. Are you always this trusting? The masked woman heard a small laugh escape the Jinchuriki's lips. No. You're just different. He answered with an amused expression. A small smile graced her hidden features as she tilted her head towards him. How so? The female Anbu asked curiosity getting the better of her. Well, when you chase after me after I do a prank, you try, but you show no hostility. In fact, I think you enjoy it sometimes. He answered. The purple-haired woman thanked Kami for a mask to hide her shocked face. So what's your name? Naruto asked looking back at the moon. The woman quietly laughed, bemused of the boy beside her. I cannot tell you that. Not while I'm in uniform, anyway. She replied. He smiled and said, figures his azure eyes gleamed in curiosity. Can I see what you look like then? I'm sure you're really pretty he said as he leaned closer to her. The question and compliment caught her off guard, a light blush painting her cheeks, not that he could see it anyway. She grinned to herself as she replied teasingly, you're cute, but not that cute. Naruto's cheeks gave a rosy hue from the compliment before giving her a brilliant grin. Cute enough to get your attention, right? A melodious laugh emitted from the violet-haired woman. The Kaiubi Jinchuriki's flirting was refreshing to her, finding it a pleasure that someone had a silver tongue with their word. Naruto's face flushed, finding the Anbu Kanoichi's laughter enjoyable and pleasurable to his ears. Finally finished, she replied, I suppose you're right, Naruto she giggled a little more before she continued. I'll show you my face once and I'll tell you my name, but must not tell anyone. Understand. Naruto grinned as he gave a thumbs up. You have my word. He said enthusiastically. Smiling, she nodded and pulled off her mask, thus showing her face. Dark perceptive eyes illuminated under the moon with her small nose and soft, supple lips. Her soft skin tone was enhanced by the lunar planet's shine, making her look angelic yet deadly. Naruto was mesmerized and made sure to engrave her face in his head. Beautiful he whispered in admiration. She gave the village pariah a beautiful smile and slowly moved her lips by his ear. My name is Yuzuki Yugao, Naruto-kun. Remember it. She whispered. Naruto graced her a genuine smile and replied, believe I will, Moonflower-chan. She smiled softly and stood back up to put her mask back on, turning away to adjust the identity-protecting object. When she turned to wave her goodbye, he was already gone. Definitely more skilled than what he shows. She said quietly to herself. Yuigao stayed for a few moments longer before she made a decision within herself. You won't alone anymore, Naruto. 
The elite shinobi looked at the sky before she too disappeared into the night. Flashback end. Ever since that night, they began to grow close to each other. Naruto Kun Yuigao thought in worry as she continued to run towards the hospital with Tsunade and Kakashi. Time skipped two weeks later. Naruto had all of his valuables as he walked in the dead of night. So you're leaving without saying your farewells to your friends? Asked Kayubi. Yeah, I don't want my friends to feel bad for me. And I can't bear with the fact that the council finally got their wish. The container thought bitterly. After finally healing up, they gave me a three days to say goodbye, but with the way it has been lately, I rather not. Said Naruto as he thought on how Sakura just ignored him ever since he came back from that mission. Besides he started, his eyes glazed in melancholy as he smiled in resignation. No one would miss me. At this, Kaiubi went silent in remorse, ending the discussion. The wind blew lightly as Naruto let a sorrow-filled tear drop. He began walking into the darkness, not to be seen or heard from in the years to come. Chapter 2 Surprises Those fools. Tsunade exclaimed angrily, tears falling on her desk. Why banish him? All of them did their job and completed their mission. We shouldn't have even done that. He left on his own validation, that's treason. And he only gets a year of probation and cannot pass down in rank. The Hokage glared in remembrance of the council meeting, loathing the final decision. She couldn't stand being in her office, leaving via window as she jumped to the rooftop of the Hokage Tower. She flipped as she landed to her destination, feeling melancholy slowly set in as she leaned on the railing on the outside of the area. Her hazel eyes looked over Kanoha, its nightlife lighting up a little more than usual tonight. Her hand tightened as the wind blew, her emotions rising as she thought about the blonde-haired Jinchuriki. Naruto the golden-haired ninja had given her something that she believed lost. He ignited her faith again and helped her when she was at her lowest. Had she been around his age, she wouldn't have pushed it past her that she would have pursued him. Tsunade allowed her thoughts to wonder to when she and the medics operated on him when he had gotten back on that mission. That was the first time I've ever seen him at peace. She thought quietly to herself. Flashback, green chakra coursed through Tsunade's hands as she healed Naruto, repairing the hole in his chest. The patient in question groaned lowly as his eyes opened, his expression quiet as it was calm. The doctors and nurses, along with Tsunade and Shizun, froze and watched him. The boy looked around at the staff, Shizun, and her and muttered, damn I must be a sight, huh? The room was silent, speechless. He was on tranquilizers that should have kept him unconscious for the rest of the day, and yet, here he was awake, with a joke no less. The Kayubi container smiled as he mumbled, thanks. Shizun, worried for the boy's health, asked what was on the Mednin's minds. For what? When they looked back at him, he was asleep again. Tsunade had her head bowed, hiding the tears that slowly slid down her cheeks. Flashback end. The buxom woman narrowed her eyes as they took a sad tinge to them. He was happy that someone cared. She thought bitterly. What makes him think that we don't care? The slug princess wondered aloud. Determined began to shine in her eyes, ready to show Naruto what he thought he didn't have. Shizun appeared on the rooftop as she walked slowly through the door, tears in her eyes. The blonde woman turned to see her apprentice, becoming concerned. He's gone, Tsunade Sama. She whispered. Naruto come left the village. Tsunade slowly looked at Shizun with wide eyes. What? Disbelief was written all over the slug user's countenance. The raven-haired woman looked down as she continued. He didn't even say goodbye. Shizun's hand tightened in anger as she looked directly into her master's eyes. And the village is celebrating. Shizun cried out, her distraught emotions coming to the forefront. Tsunade walked to her apprentice and held the medic ninja, consoling her. Tsunade felt Shizun release her tears as her own fell, her anger rising. We need to get to my office. We're going to settle this. The blonde said, her pupil nodding as she held herself together to follow the angered cage. As they went inside the office, they were greeted to the side of the rookie nine, guys team with their instructors, the sand siblings, Anko, Akibi, Iruka, and Anbu operative Nico sitting, waiting patiently for them. Gara, lacking patience, bluntly asked a question that weighed on everyone's mind. Where's Yuzumaki? We haven't seen him in the past week. Shizun just looked at the floor, and Tsunade just looked at them with a pained expression he was exiled. The fire shadow replied. Everyone stiffened in shock, disbelief collectively on their visage. No words needed to be spoken now. The silence was enough. Naruto was halfway to Nami no Kuni after running for most of the night, tired from the silent run. He decided to stop at an old shrine and camp there for the night. Maybe he was crazy, but there was something about the place that drew him there. Just as he turned to look on elsewhere, he saw a moonlit clearing. Curiosity peaking, he went to the clearing. There, he discovered a sculpture of a heavenly wolf, howling to the sky. At the base of the statue it had a stone plaque that had a few words. Thank you Mother Amaterasu. Let this be a reminder to everyone that you protected the villages, no matter how challenging your endeavors were. At this, Naruto started to think. Apparently, this wolf protected everyone it cared about. The Kaiubi Jinchuriki applied his situation to the message. Are they really worth it? 
Naruto asked himself as he thought about his precious people. Tsunade, Shizun, Kakashi-sensei, Sakura, Shikamaru, Chaoji, Ino, Shino, Kiba, Hinata, Kurunai-sensei, Asuma-sensei, Aim, tuchi Ajisen, Yuga-chan, and even Kayubi, could I live without them in my life? He felt a strong bond for everyone, believing his question to be rather unintelligent. He knew the answer to it already. I couldn't bear it. I would die for all of them. Determination shone in his eyes as his mind was made up. Exiled or not, I will train for them Naruto laid on the side of the statue, eyes growing heavy from the traveling that he did. They are the only thing I have to live for. With that last thought, he drifted to sleep. The statue illuminated mysteriously, the wolf's eyes shining as a howl was heard throughout the forest. Mindscape, Naruto found himself in the seal. Damn, this blows. I have to change this place. This has to be unbearable to live in. Naruto said, shaking his head. He heard a chuckle that rumbled throughout the place, turning to see the nine tails watching him with a bemused expression. I would appreciate the change, if you don't mind. Naruto blinked before he turned away from it, closing his eyes in contemplation. The monumental kitsune became curious, watching its jailer as it felt the place slowly begin to shake. The seal lit up brightly, causing the fox to use its tails to protect its eyes. More of the place rumbled as it began to shift and take on a new form. When the seal dimmed down and the establishment settled, the guardian moved its appendages, becoming amazed. Now the place was a steep, grassy hill with temple-like ruins at the top of the hill. At the center of the temple ruins was a hole as big as Kayubi, filled with soft grass for the nine-tailed fox to sleep in comfortably. A lake was to the left of Naruto, clear and lightly rippling from the cool breeze. Finally the sky is filled with stars with the moon, bright and full. Kayubi looked at its jailer in shock. Why? I made your life a living hell. Why would you do this? Naruto looked at the questioning fox and replied, why not? The villagers made my life a living hell. Not you. Besides, you save me on a daily basis. And I'm sure you are lonely in here by yourself. Naruto said with a downcast look. I don't want you to hide and isolate yourself anymore. I figured since we're stuck together, we might as well get to know each other. Right. Ayubi looked at Naruto with skepticism and hidden emotions in its eyes. So you don't care if I'm a huge talking fox. Naruto sweat dropped. The stories of your height really don't do you justice the Ninetales gave a small sweat drop. As for the talking fox thing, I think it's amazing as hell. How many people can't say that they have an awesome fox like you? Naruto said excitedly. The kid soon looked into its host's eyes and found acknowledgement in their depths. Quietly, the Kayubi walked towards Naruto and began to shrink and change, red mist surrounding it. When the smoke cleared, Naruto stood rooted in his place. Kayubi became a voluptuous woman with two small fox ears on the top of her blood red hair. The tails were gone and around her neck was a necklace, the new form of her seal. She wore a black and red kimono trimmed with white on the outside. The most beautiful feature to Naruto was her red eyes. They had a low ethereal glow to them. Naruto was snapped from his thoughts when she moved into his personal space, embracing him. The whisker-cheeked shinobi began to feel silent tears fell on his shoulder, looking at the guardian he contained. His instincts began to guide him as he slowly wrapped his arms around her figure, rubbing her back as he tried to placate her. Thank you, Naruto-kun. His eyes softened in understanding. She was happy that she was accepted. Hey Kayubi. The guardian felt herself smile, hearing the soft tone in her host's voice. Um. She answered lowly, feeling herself being turned around. Her sight witnessed the beginning of dawn, its orange glow beginning to paint the sky with warm colors. The blood-haired woman smiled gracefully, actually able to feel the heat against her skin. Naruto glanced at the fox guardian and couldn't help but think, she's beautiful Naruto was glad that he decided to help her. He noticed that he was slowly fading, staring back at Kayubi. I hope you'll enjoy the place. I know it isn't the real thing, but I did what I could. She saw him becoming transparent, sighing. I thank you. The guardian said quietly, allowing a smile to grace her features. Come back here tomorrow. I'll explain what I'll be training you in. You're gonna train me? Naruto asked in shock. Kayubi smiled beautifully. Of course. I cannot have a weak host, can I? He chuckled as he grinned foxily, fading completely from her sight. Naruto groaned lowly as he moved back into reality, opening his sapphire-colored yes to see a white wolf with red markings and a flaming shield on its back, stating at him as its tails tentatively moved from side to side. He thought, I know I've seen this wolf before Naruto felt dread way over his being as he remembered the statue he saw. Oh hell no, are you a Matarasu? The fox container asked hesitantly. A feminine voice was heard from the white wolf as it nodded. Hi, I am. How did you know? Chapter 3 Masks, there are many situations that Naruto had encountered in his life. Being in a life or death situation. On a daily basis. Embarrassing himself. Plenty. But awaking to see a white wolf with heavenly status staring at him, Aya. No. You were a statue. 
Naruto yelled in surprise while pointing at Amaterasu. The wolf tilted her head to the right, showing her confusion. You mean that one over there? Amaterasu pointed with her ink-tipped tail. Naruto looked behind and sweat dropped. Yeah that one. He mumbled. So what is your name? Amaterasu inquired. You know mine, but I don't know yours. She said with her tail wagging a bit. It's Uzumaki Naruto, Amaterasu-sama. He said. The wolf's tail suddenly stopped moving. Naruto looked at her confused. Ami. Just Ami. I don't too much appreciate the honorifics. She said. Naruto then walked up to her, bending down to her eye level. Amaterasu blushed lightly from the closeness. He rubbed her neck affectionately and said, no. Her eyes widened in surprise, then narrowed in anger. When she was about to question him he grinned. I'll call you Rasu-chan. This perplexed the sun goddess. This is the first time someone ever gave her a name outside her usual names. And the way he said it, it was so endearing. Rasu-chan. She asked slowly, feeling the warmth inside her beginning to swell. Yeah. I like it. It just rolls off the tongue. And it you know, sounds cute. But if you don't like it, I do. The holy wolf interrupted. It's different, that all. She spoke with her tail beginning to sway side to side contently. Oh. Naruto answered. There was an awkward silence before Naruto got up, sighing as looked off to the distance, thinking about his former village. The wolf looked at the emotions that his eyes held, wondering what the orange-clad ninja was thinking. The blonde gave a small bow to her. Well, I'm sure you have better things to do than to talk to me, Sojana. He spoke respectively before turning away from the holy canine, continuing his journey. The white wolf looked at the departing child. She couldn't explain it, but she felt compelled to stay with the golden-haired child, if only for a little while longer. Wait. Are you going back home? Amaterasu asked. Naruto stopped in his steps. I don't have a home. He whispered as he looked into the distance. Not anymore. Amaterasu, sensing that he was emotionally distraught, walked up to Naruto and rubbed her head into his hand to comfort him. He looked down at her and smiled. It'll be okay. I'll still protect them. His eyes lightly narrowed. Even if they don't want me to. Amaterasu listened to him and thought, what happened to him? As she started to think to herself, his scent began to grab her attention. Naruto, if you don't mind me asking, why do you have a scent of a fox? The young shinobi hesitated but answered honestly. I have a guardian sealed inside of me. The sun goddess tilted her head as she sat on her haunches. May I see for myself? Amaterasu asked, wanting to see what this guardian was. It was familiar to her. Shocked, the blonde replied, how can I show you? I can't bring her out without killing myself. And I don't want to make myself a beacon for Kanoha to find either. He added silently in his thoughts. The holy wolf answered, just relax and meditate. When you clear your mind, I'll be able to transport myself inside you. Silence reigned for a moment before the golden-haired child said, all right. He sat beside her and began to relax himself. When he cleared his mind, Amaterasu walked over to him and placed a paw on his head, disappearing in a flash of light as she entered the seal. Seal, Naruto opened his eyes to his mindscape that he changed last night. I could definitely get used to this. He said enjoying the sun rising to the morning sky. He wouldn't deny that that feeling of accomplishment was all over him, proud of his work. The blonde-haired ninja began to walk to the temple ruins to look for Amaterasu. Naruto then looked by the lake and seen someone. Is that her? He thought. Changing direction, he started walking to the figure. He finally reached his destination, cautious as he was unsure of the person before him. Rasu-chan? He asked slowly. Amaterasu turned around and looked him, smiling softly. Naruto was staring at her, his whiskered cheeks taking a rosy hue. She was a gorgeous woman with a figure worthy of her status. Her battle white kimono had red designs along with a matching crimson sash, accentuated her curves nicely. She had tanned, smooth skin with wavy white hair that slightly curved at the ends. At the top of her head were two wolf ears, twitching at the sounds they would pick up. Her eyes were orange, which was his favorite color. All in all, she rivaled Kayubi in terms of beauty. Hello, Naruto-kun. The sun goddess turned her attention back to the fireball that gave light to the earth. You know, your mindscape is certainly a sight to behold. It's beautiful. Amaterasu said as she smiled contently, entranced by the state of the sky. He moved to stand by her, smiling as he replied, thanks. I saw this on top on the Hokage monument. I liked it and started going there ever since. Well, at least until Naruto stopped that train of thought before he smiled. Never mind that let's go. He said as he got up and started walking away. Amaterasu stood as she saw the pain in his eyes and became concerned. Something's wrong she thought, quietly following the golden-haired child. You smile, but it does not reach your eyes. Did something happen to you? They finally made it to the temple ruins. Naruto walked towards the center and said, Kayubi. Are you asleep? A few moments later, the fox woman walked out of the center in her human form. She offered a vulpine smile. Naruto. I said tomorrow night. 
you just wanted to see me, na? She asked, her eyes taking a mischievous gleam. Naruto reddened in the face, but stomped it down. He couldn't let Kayubi get the best of him. You have a visitor. The Ninetales was confused until she looked past him. Ami? She asked in surprise. Amaterasu looked away from the sunrise and looked back at her. Kayubi? The holy woman questioned, shocked to see the vixen. They both ran to each other and embraced one another, happy to see the other. When they pulled away, the orange-eyed woman asked, how are you? I haven't seen you since you replaced the original Nine Tails several hundred years ago. The red-haired woman replied, I was doing alright until someone with strange red showed up and tried to control me, the blood-haired woman looked distant for a brief moment. I don't remember much except going berserk and before I know it, I was sealed within Naruto. She finished. Naruto, looking at the two women said, excuse me. Not to be rude Rasu-chan, but why have you come here? I doubt you just came here on a whim. The white-haired woman nodded and replied solemnly, I came to stop the people who are capturing the guardians. It is causing the nations to go into darkness. Naruto looked surprised and Kaiwubi looked at the ground in anger. The guardians were supposed to prevent that from happening, but with the humans containing them, the nations are becoming darker and the lands will become cursed before too long. Naruto looked at the both of them. Amaterasu had a distant gaze as she looked away, and Kaiubi began to grit her teeth, resentful for the failure of her duty. The golden-haired Jinchuriki walked up to the both of them and gave a thumbs up, a confident grin on his features. That won't happen. He said, conviction in his eyes. At this, the two women looked at him in disbelief. What? Do you think it's that easy? Kaiubi replied, rather curious of her host's confidence. No. Naruto replied as his gaze became serious. Everything that is worthwhile is never easily attained. Besides, you're here. The blue-eyed child said, looking at the sun goddess. We'll make it. Kayubi and I will help you. If I die in the process then at least I know that it was for a worthy cause. Both women looked at him, shocked. How is that any good? How can you brush this off so haphazardly? Doesn't your life mean anything to you? The Ninetales asked, becoming irritated at her host. The blonde gazed at her, stopping anything else she was going to say. It does, but what good is life if I can't even cherish it with anyone? He looked down. I I want to free you. I understand that if I die you will too, so before that happens, you will be out of here. The crimson-haired vixen stared at her jailer, astonished that he was willing to go that far. What about you? Don't you have something to live for? Amaterasu asked, concern expressed through her eyes. The whiskered cheek shinobi gave a serene expression. I have my precious people. I will be in Amaterasu smiled gingerly. The Akami eyes softened towards the young Jinchuriki. Such a pure-hearted child. The Kitsune smiled tenderly at her host, rather proud of her jailer. Well, I really have to get moving. I can't afford stay in one place for too long yet. Naruto looked at the sun goddess. I'm not sure where you were going but if you want, you can come with us. The Jinchuriki grinned. It'll keep Kaiwu-chan from getting bored in here. He finished, honestly thinking of Kaiubi's well-being. Kaiubi, touched at his concern and Amaterasu, delighted of his invitation to stay with them, smiled brilliantly to him. He grinned back at them in return, glad to see the two happy. I guess I'll see you tonight. He said as he began to walk away. Kaiubi looked at Amaterasu with a mischievous grin, silently telling her to follow her lead. The sun goddess smiled wolfishly. Naruto-kun, Kaiubi cooed. Naruto's pranking senses were screaming to him. Yeah? He said nervously. You forgot something Kaiubi said, slowly walking to her host with eyes of a predator. He did I? Naruto asked, unnerved by the Koi Kitsune's expression. The sun goddess appeared behind the human sacrifice before sliding her arms around the blonde shinobi and held him close, making his cheeks take a rosy hue from feeling the matured body of the celestial woman. The nine tails appeared in front of him with hand caressing his whisker cheek, his visage becoming something akin to bliss from the pleasurable sensation on his whisker marks. Both women smiled softly as they thought it was adorable. Iwubi finally stopped and dragged her hand to the base of his neck. The blonde felt his heartbeat slow down when the ministration stopped on his whisker marks before he felt two soft pairs of lips upon each of his cheeks. He blushed heavily, not knowing what to say. Both higher beings to face him, smiling brilliantly. Naruto turned away, not knowing what to say as he just grinned. He wasn't used to that kind of attention. Make sure you are ready for tonight. I won't hold back on you, Naruto. Kayubi said. The blonde nodded in understanding. I know. I'm representing you, right? The vixen grinned, much like her jailer. As long as you know. The holy woman smiled in kind, finding the ordeal interesting as well as entertaining. She closed her eyes as she reached a decision. I will be accompanying you for a while, I'm going to teach you as well. Think of it as repayment for allowing me to travel with you. Kayubi and I will discuss what we will be training you in while you're out of the seal. Amaterasu added. Naruto looked at them, a grin on his visage. You know, you two are alright. Thanks. 
with that said, he faded out of the seal, missing the smiles on Kayubi and Amaterasu's features. Real world, Naruto, being brought out of his meditative state, stretched before remembering something. He pulled out a scroll and summoned new clothes. Thanks, sensei. The golden-haired boy said and quickly changed out of his orange jumpsuit, burning it afterwards. He now wore the standard Anbu uniform without the armor. He has a sleeveless crimson cloak over it and decided to put a black sash over that to hold the cloak in place and to finalize his attire. Grabbing another scroll, he unsealed it and a black mask appeared. Yuga-chan he thought fondly. It was a gift for his 11th birthday. He donned on the mask before leaping into the trees until he ran on top of the trees. I will protect all of you he thought. He glared at the sky in his resolution deep within his soul. Believe it. Chapter 4 Allies, Asuma Sensei. Shikamaru yelled. Asuma, Shikamaru, Izumo, and Katetsu were fighting Kakuzu and Haiden. Well, more like Kakuzu witnessing Haiden pastoring the greatness of his religion to the Kanoha Shinobi. Now to kill him and praise Jashin. Haiden exclaimed excitedly, ready to make his god proud as he licked the blood off of his weapon. The immortal lifted the spike and was about to shove it to his heart when suddenly he found that he couldn't move. Shikamaru successfully caught the crazed man with his Kajime no Jutsu. I just need to move him out of that circle whispered the shadow user. After struggling a bit, Shikamaru moved Haiden out of the circle and shouted, now. Asuma then sprang into action and threw a kunai, nicking his ear. Haiden moved to try and get back in the circle, but found the bearded man running to him, trench knives in hand. In Haiden's surprise, Asuma rushed in and beheaded the man. Haiden's body fell to the ground along with his head. The Kanohan inns turned to face Kakuzu when abruptly, the beheaded man's body moved swiftly, pulling the chain of the scythe toward Asuma. The Jounin ducked but realized that it was going back to Haiden. And Haiden's body was back in the circle. Time seemed to slow down before the Kanoha Shinobi. Asuma Sensei. Shikamaru thought in terror, about to witness his teacher's death. As quickly time seemingly slowed down, time resumed the fast pace. Just before the triple-bladed weapon could pierce the body, a gloved hand caught the staff part of the side. Startled, everyone looked to see the new arrival. A man of 5'11 that was wearing a crimson cloak and a black sash stood silently holding the side. Under the cloak was a white muscle shirt and black baggy cargo pants, which was tucked inside his Anbu-styled boots at the beginning of his shins. The black mask and likeness of a wolf, three white whisker-like lines on each cheek, was over the mysterious shinobi's face. Beyond that, the man's golden hair defied gravity and went in every direction. Finally, on his back was a adachi with a small chain at the end of its handle that was almost as tall as him. At the end of the chain was a small orange circle with spikes going all around it, resembling the sun. Aiden's body promptly took the scythe and moved back to Kakuzu, who held his head in his hands. Kakuzu hurriedly sewed Haiden's head back onto his body, his focus on the shinobi that interrupted the battle. I thought you were dead. The bounty hunter said in surprise, finding the situation going downhill. Haiden, angered that he was stopped from ending the chain smoker's life, growled as he shouted, let me fix that problem. The immortal flung himself at the cloak ninja, his weapon poised for the killing. The man pulled the blade from his back and swung it vertically, destroying everything within its path. Haiden slid to the side only to see the swordsman coming at him at high rated speeds. Haiden quickly raised his side then blocked the strike, feeling himself strained from the power behind the attack. The Kuzu, looking at the situation, decided to enter the battle. With this man still living, we need every advantage we can get. Kakuzu said fiercely. Taking his cloak off, he unleashed the masks on his back into four separate entities and charged into the fight. Haiden saw his partner interfering with a wind mask blasting air pressure at his blonde opponent. Stay the hell out of this, Kakuzu. I want him. He interrupted the sacred ceremony. Kakuzu ignored him and methodically attacked with his masks. The swordsmen blocked and dodged all of their attacks and finally decided to go on the offensive. The shinobi swiftly threw his blade up in the air and rapidly gathered razor winds with both hands which spun chaotically, crouching to his left side. Fuiten. Kamikaze no Jutsu. He called out as he lashed his left hand forward, Haiden avoiding the attack as it destroyed the earth and water entities' respective masks. The Kuzu seethed, ordering the wind and fire masks to use a joint attack, which caused a huge Gakaku no Jutsu. The swordsman sliced through his fireball with some difficulty only to see all four enemies coming at him from different angles. Haiden with an insane smile on his face as he jumped from above. Die. All four individuals launched an attack, causing an explosion. With debris flying everywhere, the Kanohan Inns covered their faces. When the smoke cleared, everyone was shocked. All of the attacks did connect, but on one fire puppet of Kakuzu. It cracked before fully breaking apart, its remains on the ground. The Kuzu shook as his rage began to boil. Haiden looked with anime eyes. What the hell? How? He was as good as dead, there's no way he could have dodged that. The immortal yelled in disbelief. 
a sound of metal clashed though the air, and everyone turned to see the sight of a sword impaling the mask of the last elemental masked beings. The golden-haired man was taking every opening he saw, trying to defeat his enemies as quick as possible. The zombie brothers attacked in unison with white-hot fury in their eyes. When Hayden looked to his left he saw that he still had the blood symbol on the ground. All I need is his blood. And then I can finish the ritual and make Jashin happy. The Jashinus said to the bounty hunter. At this point, Kakuzu didn't need to be told twice. They needed his guy dead. Hell, I might even start praising Jashin if we can get out of this. Kakuzu thought to himself before he rushed to the swordsman started with Tejutsu. The mysterious shinobi blocked a fist for his chest before lashing out his foot to stop his opponent's foot. The money-loving Akatsuki shinobi slid the targeted appendage to the left before he gave a roundhouse kick in retaliation. His enemy ducked before performing a sweep kick. Kakuzu was still in the air, so the cloaked shinobi continued his spin, getting on his hands as he attacked with his legs. The former grass nin gave a direct punch to the offending limb, using his other arm to rocket to the spinning blonde. The attack connected, but the ninja disappeared in a plum of smoke. Kakuzu was stabbed through his chest by the mysterious ninja before a log replaced the bounty hunter. The masked ninja felt hands clutch his ankles. Doten. Shinju Uzanshu no Jutsu. The threaded man called out as he began to pull his enemy into the ground below. Hayden, seeing his chance, ran to the swordsman and swung his triple-bladed staff at him. The masked shinobi swiftly escaped the headhunter technique and defended with a dachi in hand as the two weapon clanged. The masked ninja gave a palm thrust to the immortal's side, seeing him bleed from that point. In turn, Hayden pulled out the spike he used earlier and swung, prompting the golden-haired shinobi to grab the oncoming spike. Blood began to smear it, making the scythe user smirk. Hayden hastily licked the man's blood, leaped back to the blood icon. The leaf shinobi grimaced. This stranger was winning until now. Amasuma whispered, trying to get up and help the blonde-haired shinobi. Sensei, hold on. We shouldn't go. We would only get in the way. The genius said cautiously. Something tells me that this is a setup the Nara thought to himself. Izumo and Katetsu wanted to object, but only found truth in Shikamaru's words. They would wait. Now you're finished. Hayden spoke in hubris before he changed into his ritual form, stabbing himself to where his heart was. Silence reigned for a minute before Hayden screamed, blood seeping out of his mouth. W what's happening? Hayden asked as he felt horrible pain. The swordsman pointed at the side wound of the immortal some of the blood still there. Everyone's eyes widened in shock. My own blood. Hayden looked at the swordsman in rage before going unconscious. Bakuzu was becoming frightened. I have to escape. With self-preservation kicking in, he turned to run into the forest. To his horror, his opponent was already starting to deliver a series of sword attacks that put them up in the air. With one final upward slash, he swiftly put the sword on his back, twisted, and gave a thrust with a ball of wind, fire, and lightning into Kakuzu's stomach yelling, Gareku. An explosion appeared in the air, the sky becoming orange. The attack finally dissipated, making the leaf nins gaze at the mysterious shinobi with trepidation. I pray he's our side. Kitetsu whispered, fatigue still on him. Yeah. Izumo agreed. With the way we are now, we wouldn't stand a chance against that. Shikamaru stared at the cloaked shinobi in shock. He he just killed two of the Akatsuki like it was nothing Asuma, never took his eye off of the masked man. His eyes narrowed as he began to stand with a grunt. Whoever that shinobi is, he's powerful. Maybe we can recruit him. The former guardian suggested to his student as he gave a hand to his student. The shadow user nodded in agreement, accepting the help to get on his feet. It would be too troublesome to have him as an opponent at this point. Excuse me. The trench knife user started. Thanks for saving our asses. I was sure I that I was as good as dead. Picking up hide inside the cloaked man replied in a deep baritone voice, no problem. I had a score to settle with them anyway. Now, how are your injuries? Asuma winced as he held his side. We will be fine. Are you going to collect the bounty on them? The masked figure nodded. A smile graced Asuratobi's visage as he offered, why don't you come with us? I'm sure Hokage-sama would accommodate you with that. The blond man knew that the bearded man was trying to appeal to him. He could get hired to do some mercenary work for Konoha, more than likely related to Akatsuki missions. The swordsman seemed to think for a minute before he answered, all right. I got nothing to lose. The swordsman walked to Hayden and swiftly cut him to pieces, pulling out a special scroll as the immortal's body was sealed into it. He tossed the scroll to Shikamaru, who caught it. He's immortal. That scroll is modified to hold Hayden and keep him unconscious. The golden-haired man informed. Everyone nodded. The shinobi then walked to hide inside and sealed it within a normal scroll. He pulled out another scroll, beheading Kakuzu before he sealed it. With everything set, the swordsman walked over to them and said, ready when you are. Shikamaru had been staring at the masked blonde for a minute. Why does he look familiar? The Nara began to recall the bingo book before the realization dawned on him. 
Wait the white ghost everyone turned to the genius. There was a man who devastated the sound village you fit his description Shira Yurei. Shikamaru finished in caution. Everyone gazed at the masked ninja in apprehension. I won't deny that. The swordsman said calmly. Hirachimaru wanted me to be a shinobi for his village, saying that my skills were useful I refused him, and whatever is in the bingo book is the aftermath. Everyone nodded, a mixture of shock and unease weighing on them for a moment. As they walked back to Konoha, Kitetsu said, how did you know to have Haiden take his own blood? The ghost shinobi looked up for a moment. It took blood to activate his voodoo technique. I wondered if his own blood was an exception, he looked forward once more as he lightly laughed. Personally, I think it was a fluke. Asuma chuckled. Azumo posed another question. How did you get his blood in the first place? The ninja swordsman replied, when he attacked after Kakuzu put me underground. He was bleeding on his side from the wind jutsu I used. I attacked his there and used the same hand to block his spike. He took the bait when he saw the blood. Shikamaru watched the masked man in silence. The shadow user didn't know what to think of him. He sighed to himself, letting his thoughts go. They were too troublesome to deal with now. They finally reached Kanoha's gates, taking about a half an hour to make it to their destination. Two Chunin guards stopped them and said, who is the masked shinobi? Asuma took the lead as he replied, he is here to meet Tsunade Sama and collect the bounty for two S-ranked criminals. The guard's eyes widened and nodded. All right. Two of our Anbu will escort you. Standard procedure. The ghost shinobi nodded. That fine. The guard nodded as the other guard signaled the two Anbu operatives. One had a Tora mask and brown hair, and the other had a Nico mask and purple hair. The phantom ninja smiled tenderly for a moment before it slowly fell off of his was glad to see her, but he was still banished. Returning to Kanoha like this could get him killed. Still, he needed to see the Hokage to give her this information. Hello. The Tora Anbu politely greeted. We will escort you back to Hokage Zama so that you may discuss whatever business you have with her. Thanks. The swordsman said quietly, becoming nervous as he saw the populace around him. Can we travel on the roofs? I rather not deal with the villagers. No offense. The Anbu nodded, understanding him. The Nico operative finally spoke, all right. Let's get going. The two Anbu, Shira, and the rest of the group jumped on the rooftops to get to their destination. The Nico Anbu looked at the Yurei as they jumped from roof to roof. The woman could not put her finger on it, but she felt close to the masked swordsman. He's familiar to me. Almost as if I've met this person before. And that mask the Kinoichi thought in a quieter tone. The ghost shinobi, feeling someone stare at him, looked to his left and saw the violet-haired woman looking his way. Iwagao you were always curious he thought to himself. Did you want something Niko-chan? The golden-haired man asked her. Slightly startled, the purple-haired woman paused in her thoughts as she looked down. Do you know someone by the name of Naruto? Everyone now was interested in the conversation. Actually, that is one of the reasons why I want to meet Hokage-sama. Everyone snapped their heads to him. Is he alright? Is he alive? Shikamaru asked, the question plaguing his mind for years. Yeah. I asked him if he wanted to come. He wanted to, but he said he couldn't. He was banished for some reason, but he wouldn't say why. The swordsman replied in a reserved manner. He brought back a Chiha Sasuke in critical condition. The council didn't like it and the rest is history. Tora said with bitterness. The Tetsu snorted in irritation as he added, the villagers had the nerve to celebrate afterwards. Needless to say, a lot of people had an appointment with the Kibi. All of them, including Shira, shivered at that thought. That was his fate far worse than death. After reaching the tower everyone started to go their separate ways. Asuma and his group had to write their reports down, as well as take the Siratobi to the hospital, so they said their goodbyes and left. Tora had to get ready for his next mission and departed in a plume of smoke. Well, Nico started, I guess that leaves just you and me. Shira nodded, following the Anbu. When they finally reached the Hokage's office, the female Anbu knocked on the door. Enter. A soft voice answered. The phantom shinobi opened the door and looked at the violet-haired woman, bowing his head in a gentlemanly manner. After you, Anbu Haim. He said in a warm tone. Yuigao felt heat rise to her cheeks, not expecting him to flirt with her. The violet-haired Kinoichi thought to herself in amusement, thank Kami for this mask. I'm sure that I'm blushing right now. Still she placed an elegant hand on the ghost nin's mask before letting the hand slide down his chest, walking by as she softly replied, if you don't mind, then thank you. Shira's eyebrows rose as he felt heat threatening to color his face. He thought to himself, I didn't expect her to say anything back a smile began to surface on his masked face. I wonder how things would turn out if she knew who I really was. Leaving his musings, the golden-haired man looked at the blonde Hokage and thought, you haven't changed I see a sleeping Hokage and one Shizun later, the female fire shadow was awake with a hole in the wall. Poor guy Shira whispered. Yuigao and Shizun nodded in agreement. A ninja ran in to report his mission to her when she punched him through a wall. Okay. Nico, you are dismissed. 
the slug princess said, ready to get this over with. That nap was getting good. Hi Hokajama. Yuga replied, bowing respectfully. She turned to leave before Shira grabbed her hand. Surprised, she turned back to see him get something out of his pocket. Here. He said, placing a moon flower in her hand. The flower was beautiful as its fragrance was soft, making the Anbu Kanoichi lightly blush from the gift. Silence reigned for a moment before she looked at him and quietly asked, how long are you here for? Maybe few days if Hokajama allows it. The wolf mask shinobi replied in a reserved tone. The cat operative nodded, heat beginning to color her cheeks. Should that happen, I would like to meet with you again before you leave. Shira smiled warmly. Gladly. Maybe we could see each other without our masks. I'll show you my face if you show me yours. Embarrassed, the purple hair just looked down and lightly blushed. She quickly turned to leave. When she reached the door, Shira said, see you later, Niko-chan. At this, her blush increased before she closed the door. Tsunade and Shizun gaped at what just happened. This guy just flirted with an Anbu personnel. Alright, who the hell do you think you are? Do you know her? Tsunade questioned. The ghost shinobi chuckled. Yeah. But then again, you all know me too. Shizun asked in apprehension as she subtly readied herself, do we? Shira nodded, grinning under his mask. You do. I would have just sent you a message, but the information I have is too sensitive for that. He said, taking off his mask. You know, I'm not allowed to be here. Both the Hokage and her assistant looked at the man's tan skin, golden hair, azure eyes, and three whisker-like marks on each cheek. Naruto they both said in shock. The Jinchuriki gave them a grin. At your service. Chapter 5 Reacquaintance PT. 1. Silence reigned in the office of the female Hokage. Tsunade and Shizun looked at Naruto in front of them and took it all in. He had gotten taller, if by them looking up to him was indication. He now had longer golden locks of hair with the sides jetting down like the Yandame. His smile showed the two women that his canines had gotten a bit longer. They looked at his eyes and saw that it had became a deep blue which to them was more fitting for him. Naruto looked at the dazed faces of the two women and felt a bit embarrassed. He didn't change that much did he? He waved a gloved hand at the Hokage and her apprentice, trying to snap them out of it. Um are the both of you Al Ragoof. Naruto was cut off by the two Mednins because of a hug, a very air-constricting hug. Shizun, seeing the swordsman turn blue, quickly let go of him. The other wasn't so apt about releasing the Kaiubi container. Tsunade Sama. At that rate he'll pass Naruto's body went limp and now had swirls for eyes. Out. The blonde-haired woman blinked as she looked at her apprentice for a moment, her mind registering what she had said. Tsunade immediately held Naruto away from her. Oops the blonde woman whispered. Shizun just shook her head and smiled. Naruto groaned and felt a bit lightheaded. What happened? He asked, holding his head as he winced. Shizun gave a sheepish smile. Well, you were almost snuffed out by a death hug. The medical apprentice quipped. Naruto got of the couch in the office and turned to his left and saw the two women blushing in embarrassment and shame. Naruto allowed a smile to grace his features as he spoke, it's alright. I'm happy to see you both, too. The medic ninja smiled. So what was your reason for coming here? Swan asked, getting down to business. Naruto pulled two scrolls from his cloak and gave it to the Hokage. First, I wanted to get the bounty of the Akatsuki members, Haiden and Kakuzu. Both women felt their eyes widen in surprise. You defeated them? Shizun asked, shock on her countenance. The blonde-haired man nodded, confirming her question. Asuma and his team were having a bit of trouble with them, and I happened to be in the area. Haiden and Kakuzu were going to die by me anyway. Naruto said solemnly. Tsunade looked at him, perplexed. Why? I know they were after you since you are a Jinchuriki, but what did they do to make it so personal? Naruto stayed quiet for a minute before he gazed at her, his eyes taking a piercing quality. They tried to capture the Jinchuriki Yujido Nai, endangering the mist hidden village in the meanwhile. At this, both of the women were shocked. Tsunade became serious as she replied, hold on, that happened six months ago. There was an army with those two leading it. Report said that they were all destroyed by a single man. Naruto pulled up his hand and showed them his mask, realization beginning to show on their feminine visages. Naruto's expression became quiet as he spoke, I didn't really have much choice in the matter. I couldn't let the Akatsuki have her. Killer B showed up and tried to rescue his teammate, but apparently he had fought Itachi and Kisum beforehand. I took it from there and before I knew it, Haiden and Kakuzu had escaped. Silence reigned as the swordsman reached into his cloak, pulling out a scroll as he finished, on a good note, the new Mizukage asked for an alliance with Konoha. The buxom woman looked at the whiskered shinobi, genuinely confused. We didn't help her village with it the Yurei gave a sheepish grin, scratching the back of his head. Well, originally she wanted me to join her ranks. I declined and asked if she could you know look for an alliance with Konoha. He said, grinning warmly. Tsunade looked at the shinobi before her, her gaze softening. It's not that I don't appreciate what you've done, having another ally is great, but why? 
Her eyes bore into his, searching for the answer. The ghost shinobi understood that the question was deeper than the first glance. The Jinchuriki gave a resolute smile. The bonds that I share with these people mean that much to me. If I have to help Kanoha to keep them safe, then I will. Naruto stopped for a moment for the information to be processed by the two Medanins before he continued. I know I can't be accepted by Kanoha, but I can help you from the shadows. So please, accept it. His azure eyes quietly stared at the Hokage, reaching into his cloak as he pulled out a scroll with the Mizukage seal on it. Tsunade remained silent as she looked at the shinobi before her. She finally reached to a decision, extending her hand as she took the scroll. The last Senju regarded the Kaiubi container with a soft gaze, neither of the two saying a word. Shizun quietly asked, so you said you met the new Mizukage right? What are they like? The apprentice helped to steer the conversation away to something else, not just for her sake, but for the two of them as well. Naruto linked at the raven-haired woman before giving a small grin, his whiskered cheeks lightly colored. She's different. She's strong, not just in her shinobi skills, but in her character too. She isn't quick to fight, rather will try to compromise before going to that point. She'll do what it takes to protect the mist village. A genuine smile graced the Jinchuriki's facial features. She's someone you like, Tsunade chan The Hokage smiled warmly, taking note of the suffix that the ghost shinobi addressed her in. Naruto briefly looked out of the window and reminisce as he finished, Mei is definitely one of a kind. Flashback, Ujido, Karabi, and Shira walked towards the Mizukage's office. After defeating Haiden and Kakuzu, the mist leader wanted to personally thank them. Well, just him actually, the other two just wanted to come. Hell yeah. You went to work and put them in the hurt. I thought me and my bro were a demolition, but you're just an inspiration. The Kumo ninja wrapped his statement animatedly. Ujido shook her head, grimacing from the rapping shinobi's attempts of rhyming words, even if she did agree. Well, thanks again for your help. We were definitely too worn out to fight all of them. Karabi nodded as he replied, if it would have came down to it, we would have went out fighting. We can't let them have the tailed beasts, we would have been better off dying. I don't know what they have planned, but I know for sure that it'll affect the elemental nations as a whole, man. Thanks, you're alright in my book. I'm sure we'll be friends, you're off the hook. The Eight Tails container put out his fist, waiting for the ghost shinobi to acknowledge it. The masked shinobi gave an unseen smile as he pounded his fist with the rhyming shinobi, giving him a brotherly bond with the Jinchuriki. Don't worry about it. I had been tracking them down for some time now. I know they have been trying to capture the Jinchuriki for their tailed beasts, but I don't know what for. The phantom ninja's tone of voice became reserved, besides, Jinchuriki are only containers not the beasts themselves. The two Kumo shinobi's respect for the swordsman had increased a good margin, understanding the difference between the host and beast. Still, the Nekamata container thought about how he stated his last comment. As if it was from experience. Was he one too? The Eight Tails host was on the same train of thought, glancing at the blonde-haired woman. She returned the gesture, both on the same page. The two cloud ninja were about to ask him if he was a Jinchuriki before the ghost shinobi interrupted, we're here. The guards that escorted the group knocked on the door. A soft eminent voice said, enter. Then one guard opened the door and went in first, followed by the group, and last the other guard. The Mizukage had beautiful red hair trailing down to her calves, styled as they flared down the whole length. Her bangs covered her right eye and curved a bit to the left, two more locks laying past her collarbone. Her eye shined a vibrant green, filled with warmth and a well-hidden cunning within its depths. She wore a blue battle kimono with a fishnet shirt, lining the kimono. She had a belt around her waist, showing her hourglass figure. At the end of the belt, the slits of her kimono began also showing her shorts and fishnets that went to the end of her thighs. Naruto couldn't help himself as he thought, beautiful, thank you Aon Chijuro. You may leave now. She said, her focus on the masked shinobi before her. Ao stepped closer to her as he replied replied, are you sure Mizukage-sama? I don't think we can just leave you here with these strangers like this why, back in my day as the bodyguard went on his rant, the red-haired woman's eyes were shadowed. She walked up to the man with the eye patch and stopped, his gaze confused. A sickly sweet smile graced her features as she said, shut up or I'll kill you. Bao looked her with anime eyes. What did I do? Pillar B decided to answer his question with a grin. You're probably annoying her with your back in my day speech. I'm surprised you didn't get sent into next week. Everyone in the room sweat dropped, finding his speech pattern strange. She isn't a cage for nothing, right? The mist shinobi looked at the ghost user. She looks strong to me. Don't worry about her so much. Bao thought on the masked man's words. I know. I guess I do get a little out of hand sometimes. He sighed quietly and looked at Chijuro. Let's go. The bodyguard wasted no time, leaving the room. The mist swordsman followed, but took another look at the masked swordsman. He could feel the confidence radiating off of his being, unafraid of anything. It was admirable to him, wishing that he had that kind of bravery. 
He quietly exited the office, his thoughts on the Phantom Shinobi. The Mizukage was impressed. This man is stronger than he lets on. Not only that, but he stands before me without hesitation. She looked at the swordsman, respect growing for him. The golden-haired shinobi scratched the back of his head, finding the Mizukage's intense stare unnerving. Sorry if I offended you, Mizukage-sama. I didn't mean to. The woman gave a beautiful smile, amused from the apology. You have nothing to be sorry for. She replied softly. The misleader looked at the trio. If anything, I should be thanking you for helping him understand. Ujido, sensing that the Mizukage wanted to be alone with the Yurei, grabbed Karabi by his scarf and said, we'll wait outside. The rapping ninja shrugged and grabbed the swordsman by the shoulder. This girl is fine, don't mess up with this dime. He whispered for only him to hear. The wolf-masked man blushed and lowered his head a little. The tanned cloud nin laughed and walked outside with his fellow cloud shinobi, giving them their privacy. The fiery-haired woman looked at the blonde-haired man, a bemused smile gracing her features. So you are the infamous Shirayure. She said, her smile growing. The ghost shinobi grinned as he scratched his head sheepishly. I'm just a regular shinobi, Mizukage-sama. The delicate eyebrow rose as she replied, oh, strong and modest. It's hard to come across men like this nowadays. You are quite different than what I imagined you to be like. A small melodious laugh escaped her lips. Shira smiled to himself, enjoying the sound of her voice. She sighed and continued. We of the village really appreciate you stopping that Akatsuki army. Here. She presented him a scroll. Consider it as a thanks from the mist. I still have to give you the bounty of the missing nins. Shira accepted the scroll and said, thanks. As for the bounty, keep it. Just mark them off from the bingo book. She looked at him in surprise. What about your village? They may need it. The Yurei's hand flinched for a quick moment, but she caught it. Shira didn't say anything. Were you banished? The village leader asked with concern. Shira looked out her office window, lightly laughing from her being perceptive. Unfortunately, it was for something out of my control. He quietly answered. The red-haired woman felt sympathetic to the ninja before her. He seemed like a good person. Well, would you like to stay here? Your skills would be valued and you would have a new home. She offered with a little hope in her eyes. The Yurei thought for a moment before he answered, I would love to stay here, but I can't. She looked at him with a gentle gaze. I understand. If there is anything I could do for you. The spirit user paused for a moment, an idea coming to him. Well, could you please ask for an alliance with Konoha? I know it's a lot, done. The Mizukage interrupted with a smile. The swordsman looked at her in surprise. I've been considering it for a while now, and it would be beneficial for both hidden villages. The Mizukage then went into her desk and pulled out a scroll for the Hokage to read. Here. Whenever you get a chance, give it to Hokage-sama. Shira bowed in gratitude. Thank you, Mizukage-sama. The red-haired woman smiled softly. It's Mei. Terumi Mei. She said, genuinely. Shining beauty. You're truly your namesake. Naruto said with a soft, unseen smile. The mist leader blushed rosily from the compliment. Thank you. I don't mind if you call me by my name. She offered in a sensual manner. The golden-haired ninja blushed, but kept his composure. Doing so would show disrespect to you. She smiled gingerly before she said you have earned more than enough respect from me. You are banished from a village, and yet you continue to try to help them. That's a man of character to me if I were to judge, Yurei-kun. The masked man was taken aback. Yurei-kun. He thought to himself, finding that he couldn't stop the grin that appeared on his face. Feeling a little inquisitive, Mei moved from behind he desk and sat on top of it. What's with the mask? Thinking about a certain violet-haired Anbu, the shinobi swordsman answered, it was a parting gift. Mei felt her curiosity peak, wondering what the ghost shinobi looked like. She got off her desk and began to walk towards the swordsman slowly, an enticing expression on her beautiful visage. Shira, feeling nervous, began to backtrack. W what are you doing? She didn't answer, focused on what lied beyond the blonde's mask. He continued to back up as she walked forward until his back was against the wall. She swiftly moved in, trapping him. A delicate hand was placed on his chest, allowing her to feel the defined pectoral. She used her other hand and slid it on his mask in an intimate manner, taking it off smoothly. What she saw made her face flush rosily. The Mizukage took in an angular face devoid of any baby fat, framed by his golden hair and whiskered marked cheeks. She looked into his piercing azure eyes and said, such a handsome face. Why would you want to hide this? I like it he couldn't stop the heat that emitted itself upon his face. Both shinobi stared into each other's eyes, both becoming lost in one another. Mei began to feel something stir within her heart as the Jinchuriki's eyes spoke volume to her. I'm not sure why he has those same eyes as I did during the bloodline purges, and yet, they're different. There is a strength, a fire that he has. I hardly know this man, and yet her green eyes became half-lidded as she and the blonde had began inching their faces closer together. 
As they moved close together, the blonde shinobi felt the mist shadow's leg move on his. Naruto felt his body respond with his hands on her slim waist. Their lips gently touched, the kiss stirring something within them. Both melted into the embrace, the intimate gesture becoming more passionate. Mei gave an airy moan as their tongues brushed along with each other tenderly. Finally, she and the phantom shinobi slowly separated. The mist shadow retreated back, a rosy blush on her feminine visage. Naruto gazed at her, a small grin on his face, as his cheeks took a red tinge to them. Mei held her face with a hand, her rosy blush apparent. I'm sorry I don't know why I did that Naruto wasn't faring any better, bowing his head. Don't be. The Mizukage looked to see him grinning warmly to her. It was infectious, a grin appearing on her face as she thought to herself, he seems different from the rest. Not to mention that he can make a woman feel so wanted he threatened to color her cheeks once more, able to stop it. The ghost shinobi looked at the russet-haired Kinoichi before him. Well as much as I would like to stay with you, I have to leave. I need to escort those two back. Mei became a bit downhearted, wanting to learn more of the shinobi. She quietly sighed to herself. Before you go are you a Jinchuriki too? He nodded, answering her question. Which one? He looked at her and chuckled. You know that sensitive information, Mei. She pouted at him. He lifted nine fingers on his hands. Her eyes widened in shock, not expecting to met with the Kayubi Jinchuriki. The Yurei began to walk away before she asked, what's your name? He stopped walking, turning around as he gave a fox-like jin to her. Yuzumaki Naruto. Remember it. The Mizukage found a warm smile gracing her features before he finally exited, closing the door. Naruto looked over to his left to see Karabi grinning like an idiot and Yujito blinking as she stared at him. Both Kumo Nins saw his whiskered cheeks and looked at him questioningly, noting that Yujito was sporting a small blush on her face. Did you ever get the feeling that you felt naked without being naked? He asked. Then it hit him like a ton of bricks. His mask, May still had it. And now he had to explain the marks on his face. Damn it. And after getting his mask back, he explained to the Kumo Shinobi a bit about himself. Flashback end, Naruto shook his head from the memory, feeling a few chakra signatures heading their way. Tsunade Sama. Kurinai, along with Hinata, ran into the office. Is Asuma here? I saw Azumo and Katetsu, but I didn't see him and Shikamaru. Tsunade looked back at Naruto to see the mask back on his face. Fast I didn't even see him put his mask back on she looked at the ghost shinobi. Well, you were with the team during the altercation. Did Asuma sustain any major injuries? The golden-haired ninja nodded. He had taken a blow on his left leg and on his right side. It wasn't too bad, but it did need medical attention to heal properly. Gurunai looked at the swordsman in surprise, lightly bowing. Thank you and I apologize. The masked shinobi raised a hand as he interrupted. No need. I was just leaving anyway. The blonde-haired man stood up, reaching into his cloak again as he pulled out another scroll. Here. Don't open it until I leave. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. He instructed to the hokage. The slug princess nodded and took the scroll that was being given to her. Anata looked at the masked man, feeling familiarity with the phantom ninja. I think I know him. But from where? Then she concentrated on his mask and his sword. He seems familiar Hinata was so focused on him, she didn't notice him walk to her until he waved his hand in front of her face. Excuse me? Are you alright? The Hayuga blushed and began to sputter apologies. It's alright Hinata. I know I look weird with my mask anyway. Gurunai and Hinata looked at the cloaked man in suspicion. Ah no I never told you my name. Naruto cursed in his head for his slip up, but he never lost his wits about himself. You and your family techniques are famed in the shinobi world. He started. I'm disappointing that they never mentioned how beautiful you are, though. He ended in sincerity. He knew about her feelings for him when they were younger, and he always thought she was cute. But because of his background he couldn't give it a chance. Well well he was here, he was going to try to make it up to her. Anada blushed prettily from the man's compliment. Now if only she could see his face. Gurren I on the other hand, had mixed feelings. On one side, she was shocked that the man had the audacity to say that to her student. On the other side, she wished Asuma would say something that romantic to her. You're frowning. The Yurei said. Huh? Kurin I said, startled from her thoughts. I said, you're frowning. The Jinjustu mistress looked at him questioningly. Well, well you were frowning, you missed the dirt on your shirt. He pointed at her shirt. Hmm? She looked down at her shirt only to see the man's finger come up quickly and run up her face. Gotcha. He said with a playful grin, laughing. Hinata giggled, finding the shocked expression on her face funny. The two medical Kinoichi could only laugh, partially shocked that Naruto had the audacity to do that to the Jinjutsu mistress. Gurunai was embarrassed before she lightened up, allowing a smile to grace her features. After a few moments to get themselves together, the swordsman looked at the raven-haired woman. Your smile is amazing Kurinai flushed at the compliment. Tsunade garnered the Jinchuriki's attention once more. The bounties will be processed in three days. 
Until then, feel free to stay in the village. The golden-haired shinobi nodded. Thanks. I better be on my way. He turned to leave until a delicate hand stopped him. Let us show you around Kanoha. Hinata said, surprising everyone. In her head, the Hayuga thought, I want to learn more about him. I don't know why, but he reminds me of Naruto-kun. The Yurei chuckled. How can I say no? Gurunai smiled lightly before she asked, can we go to the hospital first? I want to see if Asuma-kun is okay. The masked man nodded, a mischievous gleam in his eyes. As long as you don't frown again the woman flushed and everyone snickered at her misfortune. Well, the ghost shinobi opened the door, moving to the side. Lead the way. And with that, the trio left the office and into the village. Chapter 6 Reacquaintance PT. 2. This visit sure is turning out different than what I expected Naruto thought, unsure what to make of it. He figured he would go in, stay here for a few days, and stay in the shadows to see his friends and leave with his bounty money in hand. But here he is, being taken around Kanoha by two beautiful Kinoichi. Nothing ever goes to plan when it comes at him, did it? Yurei san, how did you meet up with Asuma's team? Asked Kurinai, curious as to how they met. The ghost shinobi chuckled. Please, no need to be so formal. As to how I met up with Asuma's team, I was just at the right place, at the right time. Anata looked at the shinobi's mask again. So where are you from? Naruto looked her way, giving the Kinoichi the feeling that he was grinning. Well, when a man and a woman have strong feelings for each other, Anata and Kurinai blushed before they threw a punch at him. He caught both of their fists with unconsciously and chuckled. It's fun messing with you. Both women flushed and looked away from him. And that's how to avoid a question that doesn't need to be answered. The Yurei thought solemnly to himself. The Masked Swordsman, the Ice Queen, and the High Uga Princess were being watched by the people of Konoha with mixed feelings. On the men's side, they were basically asking who he was and or what is so great about him that he was graced to walk and talk with the two beautiful shinobi. On the women's side, they were wondering what was behind his mask. The group consisting of five people, three guys and two women, walked up to the trio. The leader was a burly man that wore a grey vest with no shirt underneath, showing various scars. He wore white fitting pants and grey sandals to complete his attire. The left wingman wore no shirt and had navy pants with Jetta sandals on. The woman on his right had green eyes, wore black cargo pants with green lines on them, and a black gown and vest with a green shirt underneath, giving her a sense on style. The leader's right wingman had on a purple muscle shirt and black shorts with an eye patch. Last, the woman on the left wore a yellow shirt that stopped at the belly button and a white skirt with black biker shorts underneath. Well would you look at that. The leader sneered. Two lovely ladies with a loser. Have you even seen his face? He could be ugly for all we know. Why take a chance on that when you can have a guarantee on this? He finished with a lecherous smile. The ghost shinobi shook his head, sighing to himself before he said, let's just keep moving. We don't want any problems. The trio walked past them. The woman on the left wingman side smiled a bit. She looked at the leader to see an angry man. She looked at the rest of the group to see them riled up also. She shook her head. Now normally, she would be the voice of reason, but this time, she decided to watch the fireworks. Hey. The leader yelled. No one dismisses me. Do you know who I am? The swordsman stopped. He turned and retorted flatly, do I care? You did have a point about my mask, but it's not even like that. They were just showing me around Kanoha, that's all. The leader's right wing man said, we don't care if they were showing you around hell. When we want something, we get it. The swordsman questioned and what do you want? At this, the leader's left wingman said, how about the mask? The phantom ninja lightly chuckled. This was a gift. The woman on the left wingman side said, what do you have to hide? Oh wait, I know. The person that gave you that mask wanted you to stop shaming and embarrassing yourself. The group laughed at her jibe. The woman in the gown and vest looked sadly at the masked man before leaving the group to go take a seat. Where are you going, Mika? The leader asked away from you and your friends. You always do this dumb stuff. She found a spot to sit at near a weapons shop. At this, the leader grew mad and then calmed himself. Whatever. She'll be back. Now, let's see what's behind that mask. The leader moved with John and speed to the Yurei. To the leader's group, Mika, and the two Kanoichi with the golden-haired man, he was fast. But to the Yurei, it was all in slow motion. Shira grabbed his hand roughly and began to apply pressure. A-H-H. Let me go. The burly man shouted, struggling to get his hand free. The swordsman stood there passively. The last person who touched my mask died. So essentially, I just saved your life. The crimson cloaked man let go of his hand. Next time, I won't save you. The man nodded slowly and the man and his crew left swiftly. Mika, Kurinai, and Hinata were shocked by the shinobi's reaction. That mask means a lot to you, doesn't it? The green-eyed Jounin asked. The ninja swordsman nodded. Yeah. So how did you get mixed up with them? Shira asked, curious of the Kanoichi. 
The obsidian-haired woman smiled lightly. We were childhood friends. I don't know what made them change that way. The woman said, downtrodden. Still, that doesn't make it right. I'm sorry for the trouble they've caused. She bowed her head in shame. The Jinjutsu mistress and Hayuga princess walked to the black and green clad girl and tried to comfort her. Naruto on the other hand was thinking towards his tenants, unsure of what to do. What can I do here? Ayubi looked at the scene before her container. You could leave her there and go about your business. Naruto frowned from the suggestion. Kayubi. The guardian grinned as she moved to placate her container. It was a thought. But you could maybe join them in their hug to help her. A sigh was heard as the sun goddess made herself known. Why don't you try doing something to take her mind off of it? Perhaps taking her with you and going around Konoha. The Jinchuriki thought about for a moment before he nodded, thanking the heavens that Amaterasu was with him. Naruto made a suggestion. How about you come with us to cool down? After we go to the hospital to see Asuma-san, we're walking around Konoha. Mecha looked at him with her forest green eyes and replied, all right. The Yure nodded and stretched. Well okay then. I suppose introductions are in order then. He stopped and looked at the red-eyed woman expectantly. What? The Jinjutsu mistress asked, confused from his gaze. Well, you're the sensei. You should be the example right? Kami, you're slacking the blonde swordsman replied flatly, grinning from the raven-haired woman's flushing face. Whatever, you could have done it. You are probably older than me, anyway. The crimson-eyed woman retorted. The ghost shinobi chuckled. I'm 17. She looked at him, her expression saying that she didn't believe him. Okay, okay. I'm 18. Now, all three of the women looked at the man in disbelief. What? My birthday just passed. Is it bad that I forgot? The Yurei asked, sheepishly scratching the back of his head. Hinata saw the gesture, reminding her of Naruto as a small pang of sadness hit her. Gurunai spoke in surprise, I thought you were in your 20s. You seem more mature than I thought. Hinata blinked and smiled coyly. So you were checking him out. You sure are the perfect example Kurinai sensei The red-eyed woman blushed before shooting back, and you weren't. Going around the village was your idea in the first place. The Byakuganaris's cheeks began to take on a red tinge. The Hayuga may have been embarrassed, but she kept her mind sharp as a response came into mind. Well it was my idea, you never denied coming with us. I know I wasn't the only one curious about him. Kurinai blushed lightly, knowing what her student had said was true. The ghostly shinobi blushed lightly as he cleared his throat to get the two arguing Kinoichi's attention. Are you ready to go to the hospital now? It's only a few block away both women stopped their argument, finally focusing at the task at hand. Kurinai's eyes began to shimmer in worry as she said, yeah. Let's go. The Jinjutsu shinobi jumped to the rooftops with her pupil following suit. Naruto watched them for a moment as he looked at Mika with him. We better not get left behind. The swordsman said to the Jounin woman. She nodded and they both jumped ahead to catch up with the master and student. Tsunade stared at the scroll Naruto had given her before he left. It was a full rundown on Orochimaru's and the Akatsuki's movements, layouts, and history. So, Naruto was the one who wiped out most of the sound village and damaged Orochimaru into such a critical state, as well as killing off Kabuto. To be so powerful in such a short amount of time she stated to herself. The blonde woman looked at the bottom left corner of the scroll to see a chakra seal. Well, what could this be? The slug princess wandered aloud before placing her index finger on the seal and added chakra. The seal glowed and another scroll and a box came into existence in a small plume of smoke. She opened the scroll and it read, Hey Tsunade-chan, I just wanted to give you a souvenir. Enjoy. Shiryure. She opened the box and grinned, thanking the heavens. The box contained the best sake in the world, three extra large bottles. Yes, today was a glorious day. I will savor these. Tsunade whispered to herself in elation as she opened the bottle. She took five good gulps before putting the bottle down and savored the wonderful flavors of the wondrous beverage. Now that's ache. The hokage said in total bliss before she fell unconscious on her desk. Yeah. Best day ever. Too bad she didn't read the bottle that she drank to know that the liquid was mixture to bring back a person's youth. And she drank half of it. The four ninjas finally made it to their destination as they were a few yards in front of the hospital. I was starting to wonder if we would ever get here. Shira said, looking at his surroundings for a brief moment before his eyes landed on the Jinjutsu expert. So you san just how young are you, if you don't mind me asking? Kurinai looked at him and allowed a small smile to grace her features. Kurinai. Just Kurinai. And I'm 24. She said softly with her cheeks taking a lovely pink tinge. Nah. Really? The swordsman asked, his tone a playful one. I had no idea by looking at demeanor, I would have guessed 22. He said slyly. Anada and Mika giggled and Kurinai pouted a little bit with her cheeks gaining more color. Stop messing with me she whispered to the Yurei. Only because you asked, Kurinai-chan. He said warmly, which made the woman feel the heat threatened to color more of her face. 
well, let's go see how Suma-sen is holding up. He said calmly, pushing aside his joking manner. Kur and I looked a little worried, and Hinata and Mika took on a more serious attitude. They all entered the hospital and went to the counter. Excuse me nurse, could you tell us if we could visit Siratobi Asuma? The nurse looked at the group and looked down at her clipboard. Let's see yes he is healthy enough to be visited. Room 706 on the 6th floor. The group smiled and the swordsman said, alright, thank you. They entered an elevator along with a doctor and another ninja. The ninja looked at Naruto with his hand by his kunai pouch, feeling intimidated. Hey, we're okay. No need for that. Shira said, feeling his unease. The ninja relaxed his stance, keeping his guard up. The doctor looked at Mika and smiled. So, you come around here often? He asked. Mika looked at the doctor and replied, I don't come here, if I don't have to sir. She said, hoping that he would catch the hint. The doctor was about to say something else when the swordsman put his arm around the green-eyed woman, causing her to feel his unusual warmth and blush from the contact. Sir, we are going through a tough time right now. The doctor nodded and looked at Kurinai and Hinata with a smile. All of us. Shira ended with his arms around Kurinai and Hinata, also causing them to redden in their cheeks. The doctor's eye twitched, but nodded. The ninja next to the crimson cloaked man just chuckled at the whole scene. You sir, are an inspiration. The Kanohanin said before the elevator doors opened to the sixth floor. The swordsman blushed under his mask but stayed silent and moved out of the elevator with his escorts and new friend. Thank you. Mika said gratefully. That doctor was creepy. Shira gave a thumbs up as he replied, no problem. Truthfully, I thought he was too. The group of four began to walk, looking for the room that they needed. 702, 704, and 706. Well, this is the room. The Yure said. He took a step back and looked to turn to Kurinai. The Jinjustu mistress smiled softly to him and walked to the door. Thank you, Shira Kun. She whispered and opened the door, going inside as everyone else followed. Asuma was lying down on the edge of the bed, trying to reach his cancer sticks that seemed just beyond his reach. Stupid Anko and her sick sense of humor. They say we're not allowed to smoke in here, but damn the consequences. I need a light. The trench knife user whispered with pure hatred. Naruto looked at the scene with his mask and only thought, prank time hey, he may be more mature, but old habits die hard. In Naruto's case, that habit will go with him to his grave. Using wind manipulation, he slowly pushed the nicotine pack towards the near hyperventilating ninja. Yes. Come, my love. You want me as much as I want you. I know it. Asuma whispered happily. The trio of women looked at him in silence as if he was a madman. Shira looked at them and snickered silently. Just reach a little more, my dancing monkey the golden-haired man thought. Ayubi grinned as she watched her container. That's right, I've finally corrupted you Naruto-kun. You know I will not disappoint. The disguised Jinchuriki chirped happily. You know better, Naruto-kun. You shouldn't do that to him. Amaterasu said inside his mind. Old habits die hard, Rasu-chan. I can't seem to shake the addiction. The phantom shinobi shot back with a grin, causing the sun goddess to shake her head as a smile began its way to her face. The trench knife user was so close to touching the cigarette pack, but he was in a lot of pain. But they are worth it. The Jounin thought and doubled his efforts. The pack moved a little more towards Asuma's hand and touched his fingers. Finally. The nicotine-deprived man said and pushed to grab them. Just as his hand was about to touch the pack, the little box of nicotine sticks moved back suddenly, making the Saratobi's eyes widened in shock as he missed the swipe and fell to the floor simultaneously. The women couldn't stifle their laughter any longer, and all of the women burst into laughing their heart's content. Asuma was startled by the laughing and looked up to see the group. Please don't tell anyone you saw that. He spoke, embarrassed. The group laughed even harder, making the bearded man sigh in defeat. My apologies Asuma-san. I couldn't resist. Asuma was helped up by Kurinai and laid back down in the bed. Shira-san. What do you mean? Asuma inquired, not understanding the apology. The ghost shinobi scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Well, I was moving your pack of cigarettes. Everyone looked at him in shock. I thought that I was just seeing things Hinata said, surprised of the ninja swordsman's admittance. Laughter was heard from Mika as she smiled. Classic. She rose her hand in a high-five manner. Knowing the gesture, Naruto gladly returned it with a resounding clap. The Chinchuriki paused for a moment before he gazed at the green-eyed woman incredulously, while everyone else looked on with anime eyes. Mika realized what she did and looked at everyone else shyly with her cheeks becoming colored. What? She asked cutely. I like a good prank. I never suspected that from her. The nine-tailed guardian said, blinking in her bewildered state. Her host nodded in agreement. None of us did Kayubi. Naruto replied, getting over his surprise. Rasu-chan. No response. Rasu-chan. The swordsman called out in his mind. He didn't get an answer. I don't know where she went, Naruto-kun. The foxy woman said honestly. 
This baffled the Jinchuriki. Where could she have gone? Naruto wondered, his mind drawing a blank. The swordsman felt a tug on his gloved hand and looked down to see a white wolf. Both Naruto and Kaiubi had an eye eyes, freezing in their places. For Naruto, it's took much self-restraint to scream unto the heavens. What the hell, Ami? Why are you out there? Kaiubi yelled. The Madarasa looked at Naruto and gave a smirk. Why, to play with Naruto-kun's emotions of course. I guess your corruption of pranks affects anyone around the holy wolf said casually and stunned the red-haired guardian. Nah, you have an albino dog sitting next to you Yurei-san. Mika pointed out. Amaterasu's left eye twitched, annoyed that she had been called an albino dog. Shira and Kayubi chuckled, knowing that the holy wolf hated when she was called a dog. It's beautiful. Is it yours? Hinata asked with a smile. Kurinai looked at the Hayuga heiress. So Kiba passed that dog love to you, huh? The red-eyed woman asked. Hinata shook her head as a negative. No, I've always had a soft spot for animals. Well I like Akamaru, hanging out with Kiba has been a little difficult. Ever since his hormones kicked in, he has been quite perverted. The golden-haired shinobi laughed a little, shrugging his shoulders. That's life I suppose. The canine waved a paw at the Hayuga, surprising the people in the room. She says thank you for the compliment. Her name is Amaterasu. The ghost ninja gave an unseen smile behind his mask as he looked at the white-furred animal. But I call her Rasu-chan for short. Shira finished as he knelt down and scratched the wolf behind her ear. MMM, that's the spot Naruto Kun the wolf moaned inside his head while her tail wagged happily. The swordsman smiled warmly, continuing his ministrations on her head. Kaiubi just giggled at the sun goddess's antics. So you all came to see me? The nicotine addict mask ninja nodded, giving the impression that he was smiling. Some more than others, Asuma San the swordsman answered and turned to Kurinai. She blushed before she moved her gaze to the chain smoker. Kurinai Chan Asuma trailed off, kissing her on her cheek before they embraced each other. Naruto looked at the scene with a small ache in his heart. He had seen this play out with so many others. He would end up saving a beautiful woman's lover, and he would be forgotten or not thanked. Hell, a couple of the guys showed off in front of him, kissing the woman and then look at him, possessive of their significant other. He did his best to not to be envious, he really did. You're lucky Asuma Naruto thought as he turned to leave to give the couple some space. Wait, Shirakun Kurinai said. The Yurei stopped and looked back. It's alright. I'll go look for a hotel to stay at. Maybe we will meet another time. The swordsman looked at everyone. Thanks for showing me around and keeping me company. It was nice. He turned around and began to walk with the wolf following his lead. Yurei Kunmika whispered in concern. Something was different about him. Hinata moved to try and stop him from leaving before the golden-haired man showed them how he earned his name. The phantom shinobi became white and transparent before fading away and disappearing, stunning everyone. Beautiful Hinata whispered. She turned on her by Akigen when he used his ghost technique and saw the movement of his chakra circulatory system. It became pure white and flowed like the wind before disappearing. So beautiful but he is hurting inside. Everyone felt the true emotion in his voice, even when he tried to cover it with a warm tone. He was lonely. Naruto became tangible at a nearby alley before he started walking to find a field or a training ground to get his mind off of things. So Rasu-chan, are you going to come back in the seal? I hear Kayubi snoring and it's pretty loud. Naruto stated. Yeah in a flash, the holy being changed into her human form and embraced the Jinchuriki. Naruto gazed at the snow-haired woman, surprised. Kayubi and I will be here for you, Naruto-kun. Amaterasu said softly and went inside his seal. Naruto gave a small smile beneath his mask and continued to walk. Ten minutes later, he found an uninhabited training ground. Finally. He said. He took the sword off of his back and began to do the katas, combining them into one deadly dance. Doing this always puts him at peace and takes his thoughts away from the world and into the wind. Suddenly, two fireballs were heading his way, and the swordsman blocked at the same pace as he was doing with his katas, slicing the fireballs and the hidden shurikens in multiple pieces. Naruto finished the last of his katas and stopped, his back toward the unwanted guests. So you and your team are back for more. The crimson cloaked man asked, becoming serious. Four shinobi jumped into the clearing. They wore cloaks that had red clouds with hoods. Sasuke, Karen, Jugo, and Sajetsu looked at the Yurei in anger. I will show you that the first time was a fluke. Sasuke said. We are going to kill you, here and now. Jugo said with his curse seal activating. You don't seem to listen very well. The golden-haired shinobi turned to face them. I told you to leave me alone, time after time. You will not receive any mercy from me this time. The Yurei got into his sword stance and disappeared. Sasuke blocked most of the phantom ninja's attacks, but the ones that landed hit near crucial spots. I couldn't keep up with some of the attacks. The young Ichiha thought to himself in surprise. The Sharingan user looked back at his team who were in alright condition. They were alive, with a few deep cuts here and there. 
Sasuke focused at the golden-haired man in a serious manner. No matter. Sasuke said and readied Kusanagi with new determination. Understand me clearly when I tell you this, Shira said. Team Taka focused on the swordsmen and also got into their stances, feeling the killer intent that irradiated. If you believe that you saw a ghost he vanished and reappeared behind them in the same stance, making their eyes widen in shock. And you did. Chapter 7 Shira Yurei vs Team Taka, Gurunai, Asuma, Hinata, and Mika continued to talk along with Kakashi and Anko, who also came in 10 minutes after the Yurei left. Asuma already had his clothes back on since he was told that he would be able to leave after a final checkup. It's amazing how the doctors and nurses in the hospital were after their training from Tsunade. Anko, why do you torture me so much? The Suratobi asked annoyed that she kept taking away his cigarettes. The snake mistress put on a cute innocent face and asked him, whatever do you mean? The wind using Jonin gave her an irritated look as his eyebrow twitched. Everyone laughed at his misfortune. So Asuma, what happened to you and your team? If I heard correct, your team went up against two of the Akatsuki. The copy ninja asked, honestly curious. The bearded man looked at his fellow Jonin and replied, we were holding our own for a while, when only one Akatsuki member was fighting us, as the other members sat on the sidelines before they took us seriously. Then we were utterly overwhelmed. Everyone's eyes widened in shock. Then how did you survive? Anko asked incredulously. If they had a plan that got them out safely then she wanted to know. She may not be well liked here, but she wasn't ready to die yet. Asuma chuckled a bit. I would like to think of it as divine intervention. You know of the Shira Yurei, correct? At this, the Sharingan user and interrogation mistress was floored. These A-ranked borderline S ranked in the bingo book by nearly decimating the sound village and single-handedly going against an Akatsuki army that was trying to take both of Kumo's Jinchiriki as well as the Mist Country with their hidden village. Kakashi said in seriousness. What happened between him and those two Akatsuki? Anko asked. The Phantom Shinobi was practically a hero in her eyes. When she heard about the Sound Village being nearly destroyed by him, she wanted to meet him then. Asuma recalled the battle in detail to satisfy the group in his room. When he finished, everyone's respect for the swordsman went up a notch. Everyone was satisfied with the story, but for Anko, she still had one question. Where is he now? At this, Asuma, Kurinai, Hinata, and Mika faltered a little with their emotions, but quickly hid it. He's somewhere in the village Kurinai started but was cut short when Killer Intent pulsed in the village. All of them went shinobi mode, and the silver-haired ninja said, something's going on in the forest. The provocative Kanoichi stepped forward, looking back with a grin. Well then, let's crash this party. As those words left her mouth, all of them, including Asuma, hopped out of a window and ran towards the source of the killer intent with other shinobi making their way there, including the former rookie nine. Tsunade woke with a start, sensing dark chakra in the forest part of the village. Most likely in a training ground by the border of Kanoha. But where are the Anbu lady Tsunade? Shizun and an injured Anbu rushed in her office. Ma'am, it's the Achiha and his team. They came and intruded the village. Said the wounded Anbu. Tsunade looked at the ninja in shock. What happened to your squad? The village leader asked worriedly. They were killed the Anbu said with grief in his voice. Tsunade clenched her teeth in anger. Tora. Did they say anything that may help us know what they are after? She asked with a calculative mind. Well, Tora started. They said that they had a ghost to put to rest, the Hokage's apprentice gasped softly, and Slug Princess's eyes narrowed in worry. Naruto she moved to get up but noticed something different about herself. Her clothes were a little baggy, she felt stronger, and above all, she felt younger. Is that supposed to happen? This will have to wait. The fire shadow thought. Shizun. Heal Tora and summon two Anbu squads. The blonde-haired woman barked. The Mednin bowed and did her tasks at hand. They need to be taken care of now. Tsune thought angrily. The Kanoha shinobi arrived to their destination and hid in the trees and was shocked at what they saw. Is that the Achiha and his team in the Akatsuki cloaks? Anko asked. Yeah, and they're fighting that man with a mask. Replied another Jonin. The swordsmanship is remarkable. Hei said in admiration. It had been a long time since he has seen such talent in Kenjutsu. It seems as though he mixed a combination of styles and flowed them into his own technique. The sickly man observed as the Yurei blocked and parried both Sasuke's and Sajetsu strikes. The swordsmen of the leaves couldn't tell what the techniques that the ghost nin used, but he knew that it was two disciplines from the shifts at his attacks and defense. The Kenjutsu user hoped he survived so he could get a chance to test his swordsmanship with a man. Excuse me. Everyone looked back with their guards up and kunai in hand, only to see Shira standing on the ground, looking their way. I'm asking all of you to please do not interfere in this battle and head back a bit. I would like to fight without the girl on Sasuke's team, sensing you as you may be a scapegoat, should they try to escape. Some of the ninjas, like Kiba, were offended, while others nodded in understanding. Before Kiba could retort, a voice said, do as he asks. 
Everyone looked to their right to see Jiraiya, Shizun, and Tsunade. All of the ninjas nodded. Thank you. The masked man said and puffed from existence. Tsunade smiled. Always the caged Bushin, huh? She thought to herself. Shira slashed at Yuugo vertically, while cursed man morphed his arm into spikes to block and parry his strike. While he did block his attack, he couldn't parry because of the strength behind it, cutting into his arm and forcing him through two trees. The orange-haired ninja looked up only to see the phantom shinobi rushing to him at high-rated speeds. Man. This guy is unrelenting. The tall man thought frantically as he dived to his left to avoid the oncoming swing where his body was a second ago. Tsujetsu jumped in and clashed his sword against the yurei. That was Zabuza Zanbatu. The masked man stated, remembering Zabuza and Haku. Yeah, it was. But he's not around to keep it sharp, so I thought I could do it for him. Sajetsu said with a vicious grin and swiped at the blonde-haired man's thighs. Instead of flipping back like Sajetsu wanted him to, Shira phased out from the attack and phased back inside Sajetsu's guard, hitting his chin with the bottom of the sword and followed up with the blade of his weapon. Like his namesake, Sajetsu turned into water and let the sword pass though him only to see a handful of electricity coming for his face. Raiden. In Adamashu. Lightning style. Lightning bolt hands, the Yurei shouted. No. The liquefied ninja thought before Sasuke blocked it with Yudori, saving him and also entering a power struggle with the masked ninja. Shira smiled beneath his mask as he put his sword in his right hand on his back and pushed harder. Sasuke attempted to overpower him by putting more chakra into his Jidori, transforming the attack into a Rikiri. Give up and make this easier on yourself. Sasuke said as he smirked arrogantly, activating his fully matured Sharingan. The golden-haired man simply shook his head. Watch closely. The Yurei whispered. The pattern of Shira's lighting discharge changed into a contained motion, like a Rasengan, but became more intense as razor winds were being added into the attack. Senpukiri. Whirlwind Blade, the wolf masked man said intensely, surprising and angering the Acheha. No. He just changed his attack and added wind into it. Sasuke knew that if this attack hit him then he and his team were finished. The raven-haired Avenger put more chakra into his attack to protect himself. So you're putting more chakra into your attack. The ghost nin asked only to feel chakra build up in the Acheha's right hand. Naruto. Kaiubi said, sensing the chakra build up too. I know he responded back to her, already having an idea on what his opponent's next move was. Sasu created a black Chidori in his right hand and planned to pierce his lung. Kuro Chidori. The youngest Ichiha shouted. The Yurei countered and surprised his opponent. Gareku. Rising sun, he called fiercely as he rammed it into Sasuke's second attack, causing a huge explosion and made them bounce along the ground. Sasuke used chakra on his hands to grip the ground to slow himself down and adjust his body. After successfully regaining his bearings, he charged at the swordsman with his team closely behind. Shira flipped through the air, applied chakra to his feet, and bounced off the ground and charged towards Team Taka, his blade in hand. Naruto be careful, they look like they have a plan for you. Amaterasu warned. Naruto nodded and asked deviously, Harasu-chan, wanna play? Amaterasu gave a predatory grin. Tag me and Naruto-kun. The blonde-haired man smirked behind his mask and the holy wolf appeared running next to him and a flash of light with a Zanbatu on her back called the Eighth Wonder, surprising everyone. Ayubi really wanted to help, so she gave her host a boost in power. Naruto felt it and thought, thanks Kaiu-chan. He felt a nudge in his mind as a welcome response. He can summon without hand seals. Kakashi asked in surprise. It's a wolf, but it seems different the Sharingan user thought to himself, unable to explain why the canine seemed so different. Tiba's partner Akimaru looked at the wolf in awe and fear and took a step back. What's wrong Akimaru? Kiba asked in concern. The dog did not reply, but kept its gaze on the white wolf slightly shaking in his place. Kiba followed his gaze. That wolf summon has Akimaru shook up. Those around the Inuzuka looked at him. Whatever it is, that wolf is isn't ordinary. The Kashi looked at the crimson cloaked man. I looked at his techniques and I couldn't copy them. Sasuke won't be able to copy them either. The silver-haired shinobi narrowed his eyes at the crimson cloak ninja. Just who are you? Sasuke summoned a battle hawk and got on top of it. Give me some wind. He ordered his team. The summoned hawk gave a mighty flap of its wings, Karen commenced a futon. To Tapa, Sajetsu swung his Zanbatu so the flat side caused a great wind, Jugo blew a futon. Renkidan and Sasuke finished it off with a katan. Ryuka no Justu, causing a gigantic fire dragon to descend upon the opposing Shionbi. The Kanohenins felt the intense heat from where they were. Everyone looked with wide eyes. Such an attack would Niji started. Suiten. Sagazu water style. Great Fang Whirlpool, a voice shouted from the roaring flames and caused everyone to look at the source of the voice. The fiery dragon collided with a vast whirlpool with fang-like waves and cancelled each other out, causing steam to spread throughout the area. 
using the mist as a cover, Amaterasu went in to attack Sajetsu, while Shura lived up to his name and became intangible, reappearing behind Sasuke and attacking with a horizontal slash. A Sharingan user blocked with Kusanagi and flipped Shira in front of the hawk, and the bird summoned slashed at him with its talons and blood sprayed in the air, only to change into water. Sasuke's eyes narrowed and felt a presence behind him and dodged the kick. The Yurei landed on the hawk's head while finishing his hand signs. Sorry Hawksan, but I need you out. Raiden. Horatian no Jintai. Lightning style. Human lightning rod. Lightning stuck Sasuke, but he was prepared for the attack and used Chidori to absorb the lightning, while the hawk was electrocuted, sending the flying animal back to its summoned plane. On the descent down, Sasuke grabbed Kusanagi with his Chidori in hand, and the weapon became charged with lightning. Chidori Nagashi. The Achiha yelled. The ghost nin blocked the attack by infusing intense winds and fires into his long katana and yelled, Amaterasu Saokai. Shining heaven sky, the Yurei's weapon was engulfed in white flames, and he clashed with Sasuke's attack. An explosion ensued, and the blonde-haired man landed safely, only to block Jugo's spiked arm from hitting himself. Sasuke came for the kill, and the Yurei's katana split vertically in half as another sword which allowed the blonde fighter to block Sasuke's slash to the waist. Sasuke and Jugo were surprised. They had him. Shira pushed them away, connected his swords back tighter, caught his breath, and got into his stance, Mitsurugi's stance from Soul Calibur 3. I wonder how Amaterasu Chan is doing. Sajetsu blocked the initial strike but was amazed by the wolf's strength. The wolf with fierceness that he had only seen in Shira. So you know how to fight with his Ambitu, huh? The water shinobi asked, getting a lit excited. Amaterasu smirked and a golden sword flashed under her Zambitu. Where the cross gourd should be was instead sharp spikes facing away from the handle. In the middle of the spikes was a peculiar feature. A white storm cloud floated inside agrily, forcing electricity into the large weapon. The holy canine decided to grace the ninja with an answer. Nah. Just two. Her feminine voice rang through the clearing, and she attacked him once again. Snapping out of his shock that he was fighting a talking female wolf, he blocked her first strike and flipped over her second strike, doing hand signs in the process. Suetan. Daibakufu. Sajetsu shouted as he finished his hand seals, and a great waterfall rushed towards the disguised celestial goddess. The Matarasu had other plans though. She ran full speed towards the waterfall and jumped to run on top of it. Sajetsu felt mocked, so he threw waves upon waves at her. Amaterasu jumped and curled herself and spun in a buzzsaw motion with her swords protruding out to slice the water. Perrin analyzed the wolf in her chakra. It's so pure. Almost as if it was a deity. The red-haired woman thought. The wolf looked at her for a split second before running so fast at Sajetsu that her afterimage had after images. She bombarded the water wielder and in response, he liquefied himself only to feel lightning electrocuting him into unconsciousness. My sword isn't called Thunderstrike for nothing. Amaterasu said lightly before bringing her attention to the sensor ninja. Karen looked at her fearfully. The sun goddess shook her head before fading away from Karen's vision. The four spectacled woman realized she was unconscious from a blow to the head from the wolf's paw. Amaterasu sighed in disappointment. It seems this battle is over. She said in dismay. Personally, she enjoyed a challenging fight, but her fight didn't last as long as she hoped it would. The celestial being looked at Naruto and his battle before she smiled. Don't get too hurt Naruto-kun. I want a real challenge when this is over. And with that, she vanished back into his mindscape. Shira chuckled as he felt Amaterasu return to his seal. They couldn't keep up with you? The Jinchuriki asked the holy entity as he dodged Yugo's arms. No, sadly they couldn't. Their skills were not even close to a warm-up. The sun goddess said as she folded her arms and leaned against a pillar in the seal inside the golden-haired man. She smiled as she looked at the sky once more. Make sure you're ready for tonight. We are fighting later to compensate from that subpar battle you wanted me to fight in. The white-haired woman quipped happily. Huh? Caught off guard with her statement, Shira overextended his swing and recovered in time to move his arm out of the way of Sasuke's Kusanagi, but Jugo landed a direct hit in Naruto's masked face. Sasuke then went through hand signs and shouted, Katen. Kakaku no Justu. The swordsman sliced through the attack but was slashed a few times by Jugo and Sasuke and Justu to Justu combination attacks, before being shoved though five trees and slammed into some boulders. Okami, Naruto-kun I apologize. Amaterasu spoke, not knowing that her statement would have thrown the Kaiubi's host off guard. The Nine Tails herself gave an amused smile, finding the whole situation entertaining. Naruto just waved it off. Ma, it's okay, Rasu chan. You just surprised me. He ended with a grin. Kaiubi just shook her head at their antics. The wolf masked man pushed himself out of the rumble and dusted himself off, taunting the conscious pair of Team Taka with that action. Sasuke looked at Shira with pure hate in his eyes. The Yurei saw it and thought it was time to get into the Achiha's head. Akashi looked at the fighters in wonderment. 
this battle is becoming something fierce. Everyone agreed. Jiraiya on the other hand, was trying to figure out what happened between the two. He already knew that the young Sharingan user was a part of the Akatsuki. In fact, that was why he was here, to relay that information to Tsunade. Well, she knows now the perverted Sanin thought with a sweat drop. Sasuke stared hard at the man in front of him. Why? The dark-haired man asked, catching both Yugo and the Yurei's attention. Why do you continue to fight? What's your motivation? Shira chuckled. Who I fight for is all I have. The golden-haired man replied with a passionate voice. The Yurei's killer intent started to rise. I've heard of your recent success in killing Itachi. Do you feel accomplished? Or do you feel hollower than ever? At this, the Ichiha felt his anger rising. Are you gonna try to revive your clan or kill all those involved in the Ichiha massacre? At this, the Sharingan descendant became enraged. My real question to you Sasuke is this. Are you going to finally look towards the light of redemption and a second chance or drown in your own darkness of misery and hate? Sasuke fumed at the swordsman, appalled. You dare question me as if I'm a child. You know nothing. He screamed. You don't know what it's like to lose everything within a single night. You don't know what the pain of being alone shut up. Shira interrupted abruptly with his killer intent spiking tremendously. All of those chances you could have taken to open up and be with someone. To have another family. I know you cannot replace family, but you could have had new bonds. All of Konoha would have gladly taken you in. The Yurei said intensely as his killer intent continued to rise rapidly. And you mean to tell me that you could not find one family that you could have given a shot. You had a choice of being alone after your family was killed. I did not. So get over yourself because the world doesn't revolve around you. Now, Jugo, Sasuke, the now woken Karen and Sajetsu, and the Konoha Shinobi, were officially afraid of the Phantom Warrior. Shira charged at the rejoined Team Taka with rage, eyes glowing through his mask. And his eyes were blazing crimson. Naruto. Calm down. Kayubi yelled, trying her best to console her host and stop the chakra feed he held. Naruto. Using our powers at the same time is dangerous. Please. Let your anger go. Amaterasu pleaded. Naruto was now going for vitals as he has already gave the crushing blow to Juugo with a well-placed Senpukiri in the stomach. The orange-haired shinobi was immediately knocked out of his curse seal state and badly bleeding, but still conscious and alive. Sajetsu slashed and grazed his mask on the left side, while Karen drop kicked him in the face. The masked man rolled with the flow, grabbed her ankles and ruthlessly slammed her into the ground and used her to club her water-affiliated teammate in the head, nearly sending the both of them unconscious. Sasuke's eyes strained to keep up with the Yurei's attacks, as he kept switching from his tangible form to his spirit-like state. Everywhere his red Tomod eyes looked, the ghost Nin was intangible, and he would only catch after images. The Ichiha had taken a mean left hook, slash on his back, and a roundhouse kick to his jaw. When he tried to dodge a sword swipe, Shira phased out only to phase inside Sasuke's guard. Fuitan. Kamikaze. Wind style. Divine wind, the Yurei yelled at point-blank range. Sasuke used Kawarimi no Jutsu, but didn't go far enough and felt a quarter of the wind Jutsu's power. The Sharingan user rushed to regain his bearings, despite the fact that he was now sporting multiple cuts. Sasuke looked up with wide eyes to see his opponent coming down with his sword, meaning to cleave him in half. The Ichiha rolled himself out of the way desperately. Manjiku Sharingan. Sasuke whispered gruffly as his eyes changed into a six-pointed star in both eyes and illuminated a bright red, like a cold fire brimming with rage. The swordsman stopped and analyzed him for a moment and looked into his eyes. The Kaiubi Jinchuriki released his hold of his tenant's chakra, feeling his body beginning to ache from the withdrawal. I apologize for rudely using your powers at the same time, Rasu and Kaiu. The golden-haired man's eyes began to shine in regret as he felt blood enter his mouth and seep past his lips behind his mask. Please forgive me. Naruto thought to the silent fox and wolf. The nine tails began to heal his internal wounds, glad that her host came to his senses. The sun mistress gave a calm smile to the blonde man, not that he could see. She was upset at him for doing such a thing, but she never stay mad with him. Just don't do that again. You know how your body reacts to our chakra to your system all at once. The foxy woman said softly, pardoning her jailer. The nine-tailed container inwardly nodded before he closed his eyes, summoning his own chakra within himself. Now that Sasuke was using his trump card, the Jinchuriki wanted to see how he how he compared with his own power. Naruto's eyes opened, glowing a dark blue, like a raging whirlwind. Everyone who was watching the battle were astonished. They all knew Sasuke's story, but the Yurei sounded alone from the start. And the power both possess it was unreal. Jiraiya knew what he felt as Shira's killer intent rose. Most of that was him, but a little bit of it leaked something that he could never forget. That small part was the killer intent of the Ninetales. But there is only one person who carried that. Naruto Jiraiya thought with a mixture of remorse and joy. 
Remorse because of all that rage built up inside of him over the years of being mistreated and joy because for years, he couldn't find his godson. He looked at Sunate and she looked back at him expectantly. His eyes widened. She knew. Akashi grew stiff as he felt the familiar killer intent. Was that the Ninetales killer intent? The copy nin looked at the black masked man. His eyes widened in a realization. That would mean that the Shirayure is Naruto. The haddock finished. Those shinobi that knew what the Ninetales killer intent felt like were coming to the same conclusion as Jiraiya and Kakashi. Her and I looked on in wonder as she too knew felt the familiar rage. But who she felt sad for was the phantom shinobi. Most of that rage was him. Her thoughts went back to how he acted earlier with her, Hinata, and Mika from the time that they met to the time that he left. Remembering the loneliness in his voice that he tried to hide, she felt another wave of sadness for the swordsman. She looked at Hinata and saw her with her Byakugan activated, her eyes shining in compassion for the swordsman. The Jinjustu mistress looked past her former pupil to see Mika's green eyes staring at the Yurei's figure with a determined stare. Last, the red-eyed woman looked at her best friend Anko, who was gazing at the blonde-haired man with an emotionless stare. Kurinai put a slender hand on the serpent mistress's shoulder to try and comfort her. Anko gave have a smile in gratitude. The purple-haired Anbu looked at the wolf-masked man in sorrow. For you to go through so much and bear it without telling anyone the violet-haired woman saw his eyes glow agrily. Naruto-kun, both fighters stared at one another with intensity. Sasuke decided to attack. Amaterasu. The Ichiha yelled. Black flames roared to life where the Yurei was standing. The swordsman poofed from existence. Team Taka's leader looked left, right, behind, up and below. Oten. Shinju's Anshu no Jutsu. Earth style. Inner decapitation technique, hands reached for Sasuke's ankles, but the Achiha jumped and flipped for a heel kick. The blonde-haired man blocked him and threw him farther into the air. Multiple slashes were being given between the two shinobi, blocking and parrying each other. Both landed on the ground. The Dark Avenger had enough of this. Sasuke charged his Amaterasu into his Chidori. The energies illuminated into a black and purple lightning ball. Take this. Chidori no Yami. 1000 birds of darkness, Shira looked at the oncoming attack in alarm. Good thing I've practiced this the swordsman thought. The Yurei first created Senpyu Kiri in his left hand and created Gareku in his right hand before fusing both attacks together into one, causing the chakra ball to glow white with an orange tinge. Jaokai Gareku. Heaven's rising sun. Both attacks collided and a harder power struggle began. Sasuke was using everything he had. Naruto pushed as hard as he could. Finally, the two opposing forces exploded, lighting up the clearing. The Kanohenins moved in to get a closer look. Yu Gao had a worried look behind her mask. Please be okay she whispered to herself. Gurunai, Hinata, Mika and Anko never spoke, but they also had a worried look. Jiraiya, Tsunade and Shizun contained their emotions to the best of their ability. The rest of the shinobi looked on in apprehension. The lighting dimmed and the dust cleared to show a majorly wounded Sasuke struggling to get up after going into the ground by the sheer force of the power struggle. Sasuke Kun Karen said as walked up to him and gently tried to pick him up. Sajetsu and Juugo helped her to get him up. Bite my arm. The raven-haired missing nin looked at her remembering her heel bite technique. Perrin, are you sure you can afford that? The bloody Sharingan user asked. His arms felt fried and numb, and he refused to take something from someone if it was their last. I have chakra to spare. Now bite. She replied. The Achiha just did as he was told ah bit her arm, feeling chakra flowing into his system. On the other side, Shira pushed himself out of the rubble he was in. His left arm was bloody, his cloak was tattered and destroyed on the left side, showing a black scar from the bottom of his shoulder blade going vertically across, ending nearly at the bottom of his chest muscle. The Yurei walked towards Team Taka, noticing the looks of disbelief on their faces. He looked at the group and smiled beneath his mask. You all may be the beginning to Sasuke's road of healing. Karen, Juugo, and Sajetsu looked at him. You all have accepted each other. Sasuke, if nothing else, will you open up to them? Sasuke stood up having a bit of his chakra returned to him. The Ichiha gazed at the man in front of him with great intensity. The Yurei simply stared back. Why are you so insistent on that? The Sharingan air asked. The Yurei looked into the raven-haired man's eyes and showed the depth of his rage and loneliness. I understand. For the first time in a long time, Sasuke truly began to consider the repercussions of the path he was on. The way he stared at him as if looking into his soul unnerved him. Shira slightly moved his head up at the sound of his mask cracking apart. The mask continued to break apart until it crumbled from the man's face. The pieces landed on the ground to reveal a pair of azure eyes, unruly golden hair, and three pronounced whisker marks on each cheek. Everyone became speechless when they recognized the figure before them. Naruto Sasuke whispered. Just a few moments ago, he admitted to himself that he was afraid of Shira Yurei, also known as Yuzumaki Naruto. Sasuke's eyes narrowed in anger. Naruto stared at him with his eyes giving the dark blue glow again. We will meet again, Naruto. 
Team Taka shoeshined themselves away from the clearing. Naruto looked down on his broken mask and sighed. It seems I never could get a break. He said and looked at the group of shinobi next to them. He recognized most of them. Different emotions flashed across the group's faces. Naruto-kun the golden-haired ninja looked to his left to see the Niko Anbu walk towards him. Naruto became nervous. He wasn't sure how this was going to turn out, whether they would be upset with him for leaving without saying goodbye, or if they would accept him. Iwigao stared at the shinobi before her, watching all out the swirling emotions within his eyes. The Kanoichi embraced him suddenly, halting the Kaiubi Jinchuriki's thoughts. Naruto's heart quickened from the gesture before he felt consoled as he wrapped his arms around the cat-masked woman, closing his eyes as he leaned his head on top of hers. Inada joined the hug, and then Anko, then Kurinai. One by one, the ninjas joined the group hug. Naruto felt so overwhelmed, his eyes watered up from raw emotion. Naruto became ghost-like and moved outside of the group, wiping away the tears that threatened to spill from his eyes. Thanks for the hugs. The blonde shinobi said, grinning in embarrassment. Evain looked at him and smiled, chuckling to themselves. Before they could bombard the ghost ninja with questions, he raised his hand in a stopping manner. I'll answer your questions another time. I would like to have the rest of the day to myself. Everyone looked at him incredulously, but understood. Thanks. I greatly appreciate it. The swordsman shinobi said with a tired look. Now if you will excuse me, I'll be looking for a hotel. Naruto turned away, but Tsunade stopped him. You could stay at the Anbu living quarters. The Yandame lookalike looked at her. What's the catch? Everyone chuckled. Since you gave me the best sake in the world, no catch. Naruto chuckled. One of the bottles was a mixture to bring one's youth back. It's obvious which one you took. He said as he pulled out his sword and showed Tsunade a reflection off of the blade part of his weapon. The blonde woman looked and jerked back in surprise. So how much did you drink? Naruto asked. The female fire shadow mumbled. I'm sorry, what was that? The ghost nin teased. She looked at him with a blush on her face. I said I drank half of it Naruto looked at her and blinked. Well, you should be around Yuhi-chan's age. Naruto replied as he shot the Jinjutsu mistress a look. She blushed rosily as she looked away from him. Asuma saw the Jinjutsu user's reaction as his eyes slightly narrowed. Tsunade-chan, could you do the me a favor? The Hokage lightly blushed from the suffix the golden-haired man used before she looked at him. Sure, what is it? The female Hokage replied. Give the rest of the mixture to Jiraiya. Naruto said with a smile. The spiky-haired sage looked at his godson in surprise. Consider it as thanks for just being there for me. The Jinchuriki replied, seeing the look on his face. But you still owe me. The author of Itcha Itcha Paradise fell in I'm style. Come on Naruto. How was I supposed to know that Conan was helping you? Jurei whined. Because I gave you a note that said she was, remember? Naruto said annoyed. You had to go so far in your sage mode, and even then you almost gotten yourself killed. If it wasn't for me showing up when I did, you would have died. Naruto spoke in a serious tone, displeased that his former sensei almost had his life ended from his decision. The toad san and hung his head in shame. Jiraiya knew he had a point. But you're not dead. The blonde-haired man gave a heartwarming smile, which made the kanoichi around them redden in their cheeks, ever so slyly. Oh before I forget, Kona-chan wanted me to give you this. Naruto dug into his pocket and gave a scroll to his old master. Jiraiya took the small paper and read it. So I've gained another person for my spy network. The perverted ninja thought. Thanks Naruto. Okay then. When we get back into my office, I'll give the mixture to him. Tsunade said, entering the conversation once again. Naruto smiled and nodded. Well, here's the key. It's for your room. Come by the tower tomorrow morning. The blonde-haired woman said pulling the key from her pocket. Naruto gratefully took the key from her and hugged her, making the hookage blush. He looked at the group and waved his goodbyes as he walked towards the village. He could good go for some Raymond right now. After letting Kaiubi tend to his wounds and changing his tattered wardrobe, he made his way to Ichiraku Raymond. The village looked at him with different emotions. Sure the hate was still there, but there was also a considerable amount of respect, admiration, and a familiar gaze that some of the women gave. He just couldn't decipher it. Being looked at like this made it uncomfortable and he didn't have a spare mask at all. Stupid Team Taka, breaking my favorite mask. That lasted for two whole years. And it was a gift to Naruto side in dismay. Well, I'll try to get another one later. He decided as he made his destination, moving a flap away as he entered the restaurant. Hey Ajison. Naruto said softly as he sat on a stool. Tucci stopped from doing his work and looked back at the whiskered marked man and gasped. And Naruto? He asked with a shaken voice. The ghost nin smiled and jumped over the counter and gave the Raymond owner a hug. Yeah, it's me Tucci Ajison. The older man hugged back tightly, elated that his favorite customer was back. Tucci pulled back and had a big smile on his face. So what will it be? The Yuzumaki looked at him with a genuine smile as he raised his hand high. 
Three miles oh Raymond please. AM walked in through the back door. Hey dad. She called with a smile. Tucci just smiled at his daughter. The waitress looked past her father and saw a man in a chrysan cloak with a mop of golden hair, pronounced whisker marks, and deep blue eyes looking back at her with a smile. Um hey AM Chan. Naruto said nervously. Recognizing their favorite customer, smiled beautifully and embraced him. I missed you Naruto-kun. She said softly. The Kyubi's host hugged her back, touched from her words. I missed you too AM Chan. Tucci smiled at the scene and went in the back to grab more ingredients. AM released the blonde shinobi before looking at Naruto up and down with a sharp gaze. You're taller than me now. She said as she held a hand to her lips as she giggled, grabbing utensils to help her father in making Naruto's order. The golden-haired ninja blushed in embarrassment. Ma, I guess I am. Naruto watched the brunette and noticed something about her. The way she moved, how swiftly she did her tasks, and the efficiency of her tasks. Her posture and mannerisms were that of a ninja. Deciding he wouldn't say anything about it, he jumped back over the counter and sat back into the stool. Okay. First bowl of Maizo Raymond is ready. Tucci shouted as he passed his bowl to Naruto. How long has it been since I've had one of these? The blonde swordsman wondered before eating and savoring its marvelous flavor. On his last bowl, three other men walked in and waited to order their bowls. Hello, welcome to the Chiraku, what would you like? AM asked with a friendly smile. How's about you, sweet thing? The first man said smugly while the other two men snickered. The Raymond waitress looked at the man that tried to flirt with her and shook her head. I'm sorry sir, but I'm interested in someone. Now, would you like to order some Raymond? She asked again, her smile being forced this time. Naruto looked at the situation in silence and analyzed the men. I don't like where this is going. The blonde thought flatly. Oh, and who would that be? This guy here. The second man pointed at the phantom shinobi. The third man said, looks like a wimp to me. The Ninetales jailer finished his bowl. The first man looked at Naruto. Hey, you look familiar Naruto stood up. Here, A.M. Chan. Keep the change. The Ninetales host said as he placed money on the counter. I remember now. You're the demon that was banished. The azure-eyed man was silent as he gazed upon the three men in front of him. Tell me. Naruto started. If you poured Raymond into a bowl, does it make the bowl itself, Raymond? The third man chuckled. Of course it doesn't. The bowl is still a bowl. Then why am I any different? Naruto asked. Everyone went quiet after that. The Yuzumaki walked to leave when he stopped. And if you idiots don't leave Aya-chan and Ajisen alone, I'll show you the difference between me and Kaiubi personally. Understand. The men nodded their heads slowly and apologized to the waitress and chef, leaving the stand with a brisk walk. Naruto looked on before leaving silently. He needed to get to the Anbu living quarters for his room. Naruto finally made it to the Anbu living quarters. He already had his key, so he started to look for the apartment he would be staying at. He saw a different Anbu look at him and acknowledge him. Naruto returned the gesture. Some of them had their masks on while others had it off. Room S15. Well, this is the place. Naruto used the key to open the door and entered it. He smiled at the simplicity of the room. He closed the door and looked around. When he was finished touring the apartment, he looked through the window. The sun was almost completely out of sight. I haven't been to the Hokage Monument in a while. He left the room via Shushan to the monument. The fox's container stood on the third's head and looked at the village. Naruto-kun, are you alright? Kaiubi asked in concern. I'm fine Kaiu-chan. I'm just a little tired. Her host replied. The ghost nin squeezed his hand until it was bleeding and began to do half seals. The swordsman placed his hand on the ground and said gently, Kuchius. Kaiubi no Kitsune.The guardian was poofed into existence. It was random how he thought to apply the summoning technique to the nine-tailed vixen. When Amaterasu gave him a contract for wolves it just came to him. Strange. Kaiubi sat next to him in her fox form with only one tail swishing around slowly. Amaterasu flashed next to her in her wolf form. The full moon is out tonight. Said the holy canine. Naruto smiled slightly. It still can't beat sunrises. Kaiubi commented. Both of them agreed. Ayubi stood up and got onto Naruto's lap before she curled herself and laid down. Naruto raised an eyebrow, amusement by the little vixen. You're warm. The guardian said with a smile. The blonde gave a small quiet laugh to himself as he started petting her. The red fox purred in content. Naruto reached for the sun goddess before pulling her close to him. The white wolf looked at him with a light blush as he began to scratch behind her ear. He did not say anything, just smiled as he closed his eyes. The Madarasu looked away with a smile and continued to look at the moon, enjoying the ministrations on her fur-covered head. Her smile grew as a thought ran by her. Hey, Naru-kun. The blonde ninja looked at her. You still owe me a fight. Are you ready? Naruto's eyes widened and looked at her. Hmm that sounds like a good idea Ami. Maybe we could double-team him. I missed out on most of the action today anyway. 
Naruto quickly looked at the kitsune on his lap. Trust me, it wasn't any exercise to begin with. But your idea will certainly make things more interesting. Naruto looked at the two animals. If I summoned you Kaiubi, that would have been a blaring hint as to who I was, even if in the end they know now. And we can't fight out here. It'll alert the village and you both know that. Both of the higher beings switched into their human forms. Kaiubi still sat on his lap with a sexy smile for her host, and Amaterasu leaned in on his chest with hers, giving a sensual grin. Naruto flushed from the two women. They were teasing him again. Who says we're fighting out here? Kaiubi and Amaterasu grinned excitedly. At this point, Naruto knew this was going to be a long night. After eight councils and reunions, Naruto woke up with a hazed mind at 5.30 am. No matter what he did, he would always wake up around this time. The whiskered man moved to get up, only to find a fox and a wolf curled up sleeping peacefully at his right side. Naruto smiled and touched both of their furs, which didn't disturb their sleep. Naruto stopped and gazed at the both of them with a melancholy stare. Ayubi and Amaterasu both probably have someone waiting for them back at their homes. Why would either one of them be interested in me? Naruto thought sadly. Though the depressing thoughts invaded his mind, it never changed the fact that he wanted to free Kaiubi from the seal. He was almost done finding a way to free her, but the seal he was missing a few key components for her true freedom. I'm almost there Kaiubi. Naruto got up from the bed, grabbed his clothes and other necessities for his morning ritual, and went to the bathroom to take a shower. After finishing up in the bathroom, the golden-haired man made breakfast for himself and the still-sleeping fox and wolf. He took one last look at them and smiled. Thanks for being there for me. He whispered. The shinobi vanished, heading for the Hokage Monument. Naruto sat on the yandame's head, enjoying the sunrise. The warmth a star provided in the mornings always calmed him. The sight of seeing the sun lighting the sky slowly before it shines in all of its glory energized him. Interesting enough, this was what inspired him create the Jutsu, Gareku, Rising Sun, a Rasengan filled with fire, lightning, and wind. So you were gonna watch the sunrise without us? Amaterasu asked while she and Kaiubi walked up behind him in their human form. Well both of you look so peaceful sleeping, I didn't have the heart to wake you up. Sheepishly replied the blonde Jinchuriki. Amaterasu smiled softly, finding his consideration rather endearing. Kaiubi looked her host in a tender manner before she grinned. I see you are recovering nicely from last night's little battle. Naruto looked at the vixen, eyebrow twitching. Mindscaper not his body was killing him. Their expectations of him in a battle were absolutely absurd, he believed. He was only a Jinchuriki, and somehow, the two expected him to be challenging for Kami's sake, he was double teamed by a guardian and a goddess. Even with his fiery spirit, he did not have a snowball's chance in hell. All in all, he got outright abused by the two. The ghost user turned away from the blood-haired woman, looking back at the landscape before him. Well, you know I aim to please. He answered softly, not desiring to entertain the kitsune guardian for a verbal exchange. The vixen gave a small pout, but smiled in resignation as she understood that her blonde host wasn't in the mood. So, how are the both of you this morning? The swordsman asked genuinely. Both women sat next to him on both sides. We're fine, thank you for asking. The foxy woman said in content. Both of them leaned on him, and Naruto wrapped his arms around their slender waists. Ayubi glanced at Naruto, her cheeks becoming a pinkish hue. As long as she had lived, she had never experienced these feelings. Around her host, she was allowed to let her guard down and just be herself, something that she had not allowed herself to do, even if she was by herself. She was completely accepted by him as she felt at peace, loved around him, and strangely enough, even protected. Naruto was powerful. Not stronger than her mind you, but powerful nonetheless. She could even say that he was attractive to her. He treated her and Amaterasu as equals and looked beyond their beauty, getting to know them on a very personal level. No one has ever gotten that close to her. An authentic smile rested on Kaiubi's visage as she nestled into him. Amaterasu had similar thoughts as she watched the sun peek over the horizon. The white-haired woman gazed at the blonde container for a brief moment. He didn't see her as Mother Amaterasu, the one who defeated Yami, but just Amaterasu or his christened name for her, Rasu-chan. She enjoyed the nickname, not that she would admit to Naruto. It gave her an identity for how she truly was when she was being herself. A part of the goddess loved the fact that it was a name that was personally made for her. No one else, just her. Although he didn't know it, Naruto was closer to her than anyone she knew. Isen, Kebagami, Jekagami, and Waka were close, but when would she actually meet see them again? Of course Kaiubi was her best friend, but their friendship was different compared to hers and Naruto. She felt content, at ease, guarded, and cherished with the Jinchuriki. Of course she was stronger than him, but he still somehow made her feel shielded, stopping anything that would try to harm her. The shinobi was attractive to her as well. She smiled genuinely before relaxing further into his chest. Naruto's expression was soft, feeling the two women relax more into his embrace. 
He looked down at the two women who gazed forward at the dawn with a tender glaze in their eyes. What's on your minds? Naruto asked them in concern. Amadrasu and Kaiubi turned their attention to him. Nothing much. Just you. The orange-eyed woman smiled softly. Naruto looked Amadarasu in the eyes, finding truth in their depths. Slowly but surely, a blush was creeping onto his face. She isn't lying the human sacrifice thought. His gaze switched from the sun goddess to the fox guardian, finding her smiling at him in a tender manner. His blush increased. Naruto finally stood, helping his companions up. The two embraced him gingerly afterwards, making the ghost shinobi gaze upon their forms quietly. Normally, that would have made him think they were up to something, but the look in their eyes told him otherwise. Not the one to reject a hug, he returned the gesture with compassion. What's wrong? Naruto asked. They released him and looked the swordsman. Nothing. But don't forget to go to the Hokage's office this morning. The guardian replied. Naruto's eyes widened, smiling as he scratched the back of his head sheepishly. That completely slipped my mind Amaterasu giggled along with Kaiubi. We know. The celestial being replied. Well thanks for the heads up. Naruto said with his patented foxy grin. Kaiubi just smiled and waved it off. Consider it as thanks for making us something to eat this morning, Narukun. And after that, she dispelled herself back into the seal. The wolf woman nodded in agreement. The breakfast was very good. And thanks again for the fight. It was enjoyable. Next time should be better. The Madarasu chirped happily before entering the seal in a flash. Naruto held a withdrawn expression as he looked to the sky once more. Amaterasu Kaiubi Naruto spoke to himself before he finally made his way towards the Hokage Tower. Maybe I do have a chance, seal. The higher beings reappeared back into the seal, soft expressions on their feminine features. I think he's finally letting his guard down. The fox guardian said quietly. True, but he's still hesitant. But we're getting through. The celestial being replied with a warm smile. When Amaterasu decided to stay with Naruto, Kaiubi told her everything that happened to him. After hearing it all, the holy being and the guardian wanted to do everything in their power to aid him. During the last few years, both beings saw how alone Naruto was, and both agreed on helping him by being there for him when he needed it. But as time passed, they began to have feelings for him. Though unspoken, both were content on sharing him. Kaiubi sighed. But why is he restraining himself? She asked, her spirits dampened. Amaterasu, seeing her best friend down said, well, at least we're making progress. I don't think it will be too long until he fully relaxes himself around us. Kaiubi smiled as she closed her eyes, encouraged from the thought. Naruto stood at the front of the Hokage Tower nervously. Now that Kanoha knew he was in the village, it would be only a matter of time before the council. Uzumaki Naruto. You are hereby under arrest for trespassing. Sends for his arrest. Naruto sighed in irritation before looking at the Anbu squad in front of him. I have a meeting with Hokage-sama. I cannot afford to miss this. The mask Lestian Churiki said. I'm sorry Naruto-san. The tiger mask Anbu started. But you have to come with us, whether you want to or not. Naruto recognized that voice. It was the other Anbu that was with Nico when they escorted him to Tsunade's office yesterday morning. Alright. I'll come with you as long as you don't bind me. The squad leader agreed and formed a circle around the crimson cloaked man. Naruto smiled lightly as the group began to walk towards the council chambers inside the tower. The whisker-cheeked man looked at the five elite ninja that surrounded him, each with an animal mask. Tora, Nico, Inu, Shishi, Antaka, Tiger, Cat, Dog, Lion, and Hawk. He figured he could try and figure out their identities to pass the time. He recognized Tora and Nico from yesterday but didn't know the rest. Naruto began to sniff their scent. Tora sent smells of water and wood, and Nico chan smells of jasmine and moonflowers with a hint of metal. Interesting Naruto thought before silently sniffing again. Inu sent smells like vanilla and dogs, Naruto took another sniff, Shishi sent smells like metal, and Taka sent smells like Raymond. Naruto finished his thought confused but never showed it on his face. He thought back to last night when he saw Tucci and AM. If that's the case, then what I saw with AM's movements were correct. But I never would have thought Anbu though. Maybe Takibetsu Jounin, but not Anbu Naruto grinned. The Anbu saw his grin and tensed up a bit. Relax. Naruto spoke in a calm voice. When I give my word, I see it through. Thora saw the glint in the man's dark blue eyes. What are you up to Naruto? The brown-haired man wondered warily. He only saw that glint once before in the man's eyes when he was younger. It usually meant that he had a plan or someone was about to get embarrassed. Sometimes both. So Niko-chan Naruto started. Yugao felt heat lightly enter her cheeks, shaking her embarrassment off as she turned her attention to him. What did you do with the moonflower I gave you? Now everyone was interested. When did this happen? The Anbu paid more attention to the conversation. The violet-haired woman looked at the swordsman. I still have it if that's what you're asking. Naruto smiled and nodded. The purple-haired woman was curious though. What was your reason for giving it to me? 
The former village pariah looked at her and gave a smile that made her, Taka, and Inu almost melt right then. Because moonflowers are rare. He replied in a reserved tone. That, and it's also my way of telling you that I haven't forgotten you. At this, he grinned. Iwagao felt heat slowly come on her cheeks. All of this time, he hadn't forgotten her. And his compliment, moonflowers are rare because they only grow once a year and start blooming in the evening time and comes into full bloom at night. But in this case he was saying, he liked her in terms of skill, beauty, and personality. In Anbu, her skills flourish in the shadows of night. The moonflower itself is a beautiful, delicate flower, but has strong vines, like her physically. And during the night is the time where she usually can be herself. Like the night that they met. Naruto looked away from her with a knowing smile. I'm glad to see that you are still perceptive as ever. He replied, slightly blushing himself. Inu and Taka also understood what he meant, finding themselves at a loss for words. They were jealous that they didn't have someone that was as romantic as that. Suddenly, a growl was heard, and the squad looked at their captive. Naruto flushed embarrassingly. I guess I didn't make enough breakfast this morning. He gave an innocent thinking pose, but if one looked closely, you could see the mischief in his eyes. I hope Ajisen and Ayachan are open when this is over. Taka's eyes widened. He called me Ayachan last night when those guys came in the Raymond bar too. She blushed and turned her head slightly to the right, and her hands moved a little closer to her lap. This subtle action didn't escape Naruto. So I was right, the Kyubi host thought slyly. The blonde turned to face dog masked personnel. Inu stared back nervously, not that you could tell. The fox container continued to stare at the dog masked woman before she decided to ask, Is there any reason why you're staring at me? Naruto grinned foxily before replying, Because I think you're pretty. Inu tilted her head questioningly. You don't even know what I look like. The elite ninja replied, eye twitching. The swordsman chuckled. Sure I do. You were the beautiful flower that came to cure dog boy's partner at this, Inu's eyes widened as she felt her face heat up. I can't believe he remembered that. And he thinks I'm beautiful. The brown-haired woman thought as her blush increased. Naruto thought to himself, three down, two to go, but before he could start on his next victim, the Shishi Anbu announced, we're here. The Jinchuriki sighed quietly. Thanks for the escort. It was fun while it lasted. The golden-haired man said before his playful side was set away before his serious side returned to face the council. The Anbu noticed his change in attitude and slightly shivered. Well this is gonna be interesting to say the least were the collective thoughts of the Anbu. They opened the doors and entered the council room with Tsunade at the head of the table. The female fire shadow gave an apologetic glance to Naruto, which was responded with a small smile. Most of the civilian side and a few of the shinobi side sneered at the side of the man in question, while the most of the shinobi side, which consisted of clan heads, looked on in sympathy. Well Yuzumaki, do you not know the meaning of banishment? Danzo started off in the meeting. Naruto just chuckled, making the old warhawk narrow his eye at him. Shikaku looked at Naruto. I know you didn't come here only to be discovered, Yuzumaki-san. Naruto looked at the Nara clan head. Please, just Naruto will be fine. As for coming here, it was not my intention to be exposed. I simply came to collect my bounty, send a message to Tsunade-sama, and be on my way. And what might that message be? Questioned Kaharu. Something that was told to me. Tsunade said with authority. This man gave vital information to us about Orochimaru and the Akatsuki, along with giving us a new alliance with Kurigakur. The council was shaken by the news. Everyone looked at the crimson cloaked man. Why? Started soon. Why do you continue to help us? I know that if it was me, I wouldn't even think about the village. Maybe my clan, but not the village. The Inuzuka clan head finished with a withdrawn expression. The rest of the clan heads nodded in agreement. Everyone looked at Naruto for a response. The ninja swordsman looked at the council with a reserved smile. The few people I do have in this village is what keeps me going. The blonde man began. If I have to protect everyone in the village to ensure my few people's safety, then that's what I'll do. He finished. But that still doesn't negate the fact that you are still here when you are banished. Stated Hamura. The whiskered man laughed quietly. You're right, it doesn't. I say we should execute him. A civilian councilman proposed. Tsunade looked at him. Too bad you aren't a ninja clan head, for this is a shinobi matter. The blonde-haired woman said calmly, deciding to block the civilians entirely. Naruto had an idea. Let me prove myself to you then. Everyone in the room looked at the human sacrifice curiously. The Hokage smiled, knowing how he could. All right. Now everyone's attention was on the legendary medic. Earlier this week, I've been informed that all of the cages will meet due to some arising threats that have begun to show up all around the elemental countries. Everyone nodded. All of us are bringing two of our ninjas for protection in case someone tries to attack us. What I'm proposing to all of you is Naruto goes with me as one of my nins. The reactions of the council varied. Most of the civilian side was in an uproar, while the few who weren't actually thought about the idea. 
Danzo, Hamura, and Kahara were outraged while the clan heads thought and accepted the idea. How do you know that he will come through for us? Snarled Danzo. Hiashi, having enough of the crippled man, equally snarled back, he has proven his loyalty to us time and time again. Can you say the same? Silence reigned inside the chamber. Hiashi Hayuga, the most emotionless clan head they knew, actually showed emotion and anger at that, defended Naruto and questioned Danzo's allegiance. Unheard of. I never had to question his loyalty for a moment, unlike you. The Hayuga stated coldly. Danzo stared back at the man in anger. Think of it this way, Danzo. What would the other cages think if they see Shira Yurei as Kanoha's ninja? Naruto said, trying to appeal to Danzo's warhawk nature. Everyone was surprised when Danzo closed his eyes calmly. It's not like I haven't thought of that. It's just that we gave you no reason for you to help us. I just want what's best for Kanoha. He spoke before coming into a decision. I accept Hokage-sama's proposal. Danzo said begrudgingly. Everyone was floored. No one, absolutely no one has ever seen the old Warhawk act the way he did. Tsune chuckled before saying, accepting this just makes it easier for me. Either way, he was going whether you wanted him to go or not. The clan head snickered while Danzo stared impassively. Aheru, seeing that the debate was final, bitterly asked, so when are you supposed to leave? The granddaughter of the Shadai Hokage replied, the meeting starts in three days, but we're leaving tomorrow. She looked at everyone and asked, anything else? Everyone shook their heads. Tsunade said with finality, well then, meeting adjourned. Naruto smiled in relief. Everyone started walking out of the room when Naruto walked towards the clan heads and stopped them. Thank you for supporting me. Even though some of you didn't say anything, I saw that you were in agreement, and for that I am grateful. The Jinchuriki thanked and bowed his head a little. Please, don't bow. If anything, we should be thanking you. Shibi said. Naruto looked at them and tilted his head in confusion. Niko, Inu, Taka, Swan, and Tsum had to stop themselves from the kawaii. Reflex that all women seemed to have. Inoichi saw this and chuckled. You have bettered our children in ways that you may not have known. That's why we are thanking you. Naruto's eyes light up in recognition and gave a brilliant smile. Glad to help. Naruto said happily. The clan head smiled. Tsum gazed at the Kaiubi host and Inu with a smirk. I hope Hana goes for you Naruto. You're one of the few men I trust to take care of her. The Inuzuka mother thought to herself. Naruto. The said man turned to see Tsunade motioning for him to come with her. He nodded and looked back at the family leaders. Looks like I have to leave. Thanks again and have a good day. The swordsman smiled and left the group. Naruto followed Tsunade back to her office and sat on the chair in front of the Hokage desk. Tsunade followed in after finishing a silencing jutsu. Alright, since you will be coming with me and Tenzo to the cage meeting, I need to know how strong you are. Tsunade said, getting down to business. The crimson cloaked man went into his professional mode and stated, using just my abilities, I would say I could take on three cages before getting stressed. The Hokage looked at Naruto in awe. Just how much training did he go through? When you were fighting Sasuke, it felt like you were at Sanin level. Tsunade exclaimed. Naruto smiled a bit. Did you ever wonder why I never went unconscious during that battle? Did it even seem like I had a lot of energy to spare? Tsunade thought about it and recalled Naruto and Jiraiya's quarrel. You even went to go get something to eat afterwards, like nothing happened Tsunade said. I was wondering about that. This certainly explains some things. Another voice said. Naruto just shook his head while Tsunade's eyebrow twitched in irritation. Hey, Iro Jiraiya. The said person face faulted while the female San and laughed at the name. Gaki. Why did you call me that? Jiraiya asked in anger. Naruto looked back at the man. Well I do recall you telling me to stop calling you Iro Senen. So I just gave the name a little adjustment. The Jinkuriki said with a grin. Tsunade at this point was clutching her sides from laughter. The Gama Senen just hung his head in defeat. Naruto shook his head and said, you just can't win for nothing can you? The perverted man just sulked even more. Tsunade recompassed herself before remembering something. It's a good thing you're here though. Here. She said as she tossed a bottle to her old teammate. He caught it and looked at the red liquid. It's half empty. Jiraiya deadpanned. Naruto laughed a bit. That's Tsuna-chan for ya. Naruto said making the perverted author laugh and Tsunade reddened in her cheeks. So this is what made Tsunade younger physically? Jiraiya asked. The ninja swordsman gave him a thumbs up. Okay. Said the wild-haired man before opening the bottle and catching the fragrance of the bottle. Whoa. Okay Tsunade what am I expecting here as far taste goes? Questioned Jiraiya with his mouth already watering up. The best sake in the world. Exclaimed Tsunade before saying, but don't drink it yet. The toad sage looked at her with the open bottle already tilted to his mouth. Why? He whined. Well, you'll fall out afterwards. Naruto said. Jiraiya sighed and put the cap back on the bottle. All right, Jiraiya. You know of the meeting of the cages, right? Tsunade asked. The white-haired man nodded. 
Well well I'm gone, I need you to be Hokage momentarily. The sage sighed. He knew this was coming. And as Naruto and Tsunade could tell, he did not want the responsibility. Hey sensei. Naruto said. Jiraiya looked at him. If you do this, you can call us even. At this, the man's eyes lit up a little bit. Alright. I'll do it. But please, hurry back. He said. Tsunade got up and stretched a bit. We'll try. I need to go and pack up my things. We are leaving at 8am sharp tomorrow. She announced. Naruto and Jiraiya nodded. Hey Ro Jiraiya. Naruto asked, gaining his attention. You wanna know how to do paperwork faster? Both Sanans looked at Naruto. For Jiraiya, paperwork was the main reason that he didn't want to be a Hokage. For Tsunade, Naruto found a solution to the undefeatable problem. Tell me. The two legendary ninjas pleaded. Naruto chuckled and said, Cage Bushin passes the information back to you right. Both of the ninjas looked at each other before looking at Naruto. Tsunade slowly walked to the golden-haired man before she hugged the golden-haired man. The embrace became tighter and tighter and tighter. She was so happy to know this information that she unconsciously used chakra in the hug. Tsunade. He's blue. Jiraiya exclaimed. The Hokage was still hugging him until she felt his warmth disappear. Where'd he go? She thought aloud. Both looked around and saw him fade back into existence again in front of them. You give a whole new meaning to kill Joy Naruto whispered to himself while his face was regaining its original color. The Hokage blushed. She almost made him pass out again. Naruto smiled and reassured her. It's okay Tsunade-chan. Jiraiya smiled lecherously. Perfect material if you take out that pad, I'm destroying you. The slug princess deadpanned. The pervert quickly knocked his smile off and looked at the bottle in his hand. So, is that all? The blonde-haired woman nodded. Good. And with that said, Jiraiya chugged the bottle until every last drop was gone. The toad sage looked at the two blondes with a huge smile. Dom. He exclaimed and promptly passed out on the floor. Tsunade and Naruto laughed before calming down. Hey Tsunade-chan. The woman's face slightly turned pink. Yeah Naruto. Naruto hugged her surprising her before she hugged him back. Thanks for everything. He said before letting go. Tsunade giggled and replied, I should say the same for you. Maybe we could go on a date as thanks to each other. Slowly he came onto the whiskered man's cheeks. He looked at her and saw a small blush on her face. Think about it. She said before she left the room with a sway of her hips, causing the Jinchuriki to flush a bit more. Naruto left the tower with what Tsunade proposed on his mind. Maybe she was joking, but technically she is younger now he thought to himself before shaking off his thoughts. He saw Nico outside of the building, sitting under a tree as she polished her katana. She said she wanted to talk earlier. I wonder what she wanted. The crimson cloaked man thought as he made his way to the masked woman. Hey Nico-chan. The swordsman greeted. The masked Kinoichi looked up to see the crimson cloaked man and stood up, placing her weapon in its sheath. Hey, Naruto-kun. She said. Naruto smiled, glad to see her again. Is there something you wanted to talk about? The golden-haired man asked. Yes, but before that, I wanted to give you something. Yuga started. Your mask was destroyed by the Ichiha and his group, and I figured you were going to try and replace it, so here. The purple-haired woman said before handing him a mask that looked like his old mask. It was a black wolf mask that had three jagged lines like the pronounced version of his whisker marks. Naruto gave her a dazzling smile which made the masked woman's heart skip a beat. Thank you. I don't know how to repay you Naruto said truly happy that he got his mask back. Do you want to get something to eat with me? Naruto offered. Yuga was taken aback. Was he asking her on a date? There was always something more with him she thought, her expression soft. As the female Anbu was about to reply, her teammate came and gave her a scroll before leaving. She sighed in disappointment. I would love to, but it seems I have another mission to attend to. The dark blue-eyed man nodded in understanding. But how about after your trip with Tsunade Sama? Naruto looked up surprised in her efforts to make time for him. A genuine smile graced his features. I would love that. He answered. This makes me look forward to coming back much quicker. He said with some enthusiasm. The cat-masked woman giggled at his words and expression on his face. Glad I'm someone you look forward to seeing. Naruto grinned. Nico gracefully moved closer to the fox container. The ghost shinobi wondered what she was doing, unable to read her while her face was covered. Yuga took off her mask, making his feet plant where he stood to take in her beauty. Long, smooth violet hair with two long tresses framing her beautiful face, free from any blemishes with her soft complexion. Sharp, light purple eyes with a cute nose along with soft full lips covered in red, enhancing her feminine visage. Just as beautiful as the first time I saw you the Kaiubi container thought tenderly. Yuga smiled genuinely with a small blush before caressing his whiskered cheek. She moved her lips towards his before the pair gave a soft kiss, embracing each other in the process. The two separated, the lack of air apparent. The woman smiled again saying, that's for the moonflower and the compliments. 
Naruto smiled, nodding in understanding. I'll be waiting for you, Neru-kun. The purple-haired Anbu spoke softly before putting on her mask. I'll do my best to not keep you waiting, Yuzuki-chan. He replied genuinely. Iwagao felt heat rise to her face before waving her goodbye, leaving in a swirl of leaves. Naruto smiled before putting his mask in his cloak pocket. Naruto sat in the ramen vendor eating his second bowl. His mind was still on Tsunade and Yuigao for a while, before it began to wonder about the cage meeting. This trip will not come without something bad happening. The blonde thought solemnly. And something tells me that this meeting isn't all that it seems. The golden-haired man checked his inventory on his person and figured he could get another pack of explosive paper. You never know when you need a good bang. He thought, laughing quietly to himself. He paid for his bowls before leaving to buy more explosive tags. Naruto. The human sacrifice looked back to see Sakura coming his way. Naruto did not say a word, instead continuing to walk ahead. The medic looked confused. I know he heard me she whispered to herself. She ran to catch up with her former teammate. Naruto why didn't you stop? The pin cat asked. The golden haired man looked at her heatedly before looking back on the road that they were on. The pink haired Mednin was hurt by his actions. Why aren't you talking to me? She asked with frustration. Naruto simply kept walking. Sakura walked in front of him and stopped. What's going on? Why are you ignoring me? Naruto didn't stop walking and became intangible to pass though her and returning tangible when he fully passed through. The apprentice Mednin started to tear up before the fox container stopped walking. He looked her way before saying, I know what you want. I kept my promise, Sakura-san. He continued his walk on the road. Sakura was at a loss for words. She knew he was referring back to when he returned Sasuke. She flat out ignored him when he would try to talk to her. He continued before one day, he just disappeared, later on learning that he was exiled from the village. She always thought that he would bounce back from anything she did to him, but she forgotten something that is common law to everyone in this world, everyone has a limit. She realized that he reached his and didn't want any dealings with her. He even dropped the chan from my name the Chunin thought in sadness. She ran in front of him once more before saying, Naruto, I need to apologize to you. I the swordsman interrupted her. I have already forgiven you, Sakura-san. I just need some time before I can talk to you. A show of hurt flashed in his eyes before disappearing. The female of Team 7 was taken aback before she replied, I I understand. Naruto said, have a good day then. He walked past her, impassive. Sakura looked on as he continued walking away, sorrow hitting her emotions. Just how much did I hurt him? She asked ashamed of herself and actions. As for how bad she hurt him, it was more than she would ever know. Naruto had been walking around to find a shinobi shop silently for 15 minutes now. Naruto-kun, we're here if you want to talk about it. You don't have to distance yourself. The nine-tailed vixen offered soothingly. The phantom shinobi remained silent. Please you don't have to deal with it alone the white wolf spoke in a gentle tone. Naruto was touched at their concern, but he was saddened that they were worried for him. Don't be so sad for me. I'll be fine. Just don't be sad, alright. He responded back to them. He suddenly felt heat rushing in his body before it disappeared. What the hell was that? The swordsman asked surprised. Kaiubi and Amaterasu grinned. Since can't get out and give you a hug, we just decided to give you one from here. Kaiubi exclaimed cheekily. Naruto flushed lightly. So how did it feel? Amaterasu asked in curiosity. The blonde-haired man fought down another blush. He was about to reply when he bumped into someone. Still standing, he looked down to see the Jinjutsu mistress with the serpent mistress. I'm sorry, I should have been paying attention. The man apologized grabbing a hold to their slender hands to pull them up. Earlier that day, Anko asked Kuranite to help her find the person they just crashed into. The brunette agreed to help her because though she won't admit it, she too wanted to find and thank him. Plus I want to get to know him better. Thought the red-eyed woman. Anko on the other hand, wanted to thank the dark blue-eyed man for destroying the sound village, as well as nearly killing their cage off. She was so elated when her friend agreed to find Naruto, she dragged her around until they both collided into the person they were looking for. Now both of the Kanoichi felt a hand on theirs to help them back up. Anko scratched her head sheepishly. Sorry about that. I was just in a rush to find you and ended up dragging Nai-chan with me. Now Naruto had question marks over his head. You were in a rush to find me? For what? He asked, honestly perplexed. The provocative Kanoichi grinned. I wanted to thank you for destroying the snake's little village. Naruto's eyes shined in revelation. Now it makes sense. Um, you're welcome Anko-chan. Anko beamed and Kurinai smiled. Naruto looked at the red-eyed woman. So you agreed with her because you wanted to see me again Kurinai-chan? The ninja swordsman asked teasingly. The black-haired woman blushed. Anko looked on and smirked. Perfect blackmail material. So that's why I didn't have much of a fight from you. I don't blame you. He is pretty sexy. 
Anko exclaimed, further embarrassing the bandage wrapped Jounin. Naruto chuckled at the Kanoichi's misfortune before catching a glimpse of a black mark on the Takibetsu Jounin's shoulder. That must be the curse seal she has. I wish I could take it off of her. He thought to himself. Then he got an idea. Rasu-chan, your chakra has healing abilities, right? Amaterasu replied, that's right. And Kaiyu-chan, your chakra is so potent that other invading chakra can't coexist more or less, right? Naruto questioned again. Basically. Kaiyu-bi replied. Naruto smiled triumphantly. The fox and wolf beings were a bit lost. What are you planning? The red-haired woman asked. You'll see. The jailer answered cryptically. Naruto. Anko yelled. He spaced out for a minute on them, and they were trying to get his attention. The golden-haired man heard her and replied, yes Anko Haim. That caused the purple-haired woman to blush. Kurinai and Naruto saw her reaction, but the Jinjutsu expert saw this as payback. Naruto-kun, I think she likes the name. Kurinai said slyly. Naruto smirked a little. Really? Well maybe that will be her nickname from now on he said in a smooth manner. Not the one to be outdone, the purple-haired woman played along. I would love that Anko said as she pushed herself to him, allowing him to feel her ample breasts, before her hot breath came by his ear. Naruto-sama. Well then the fox container started as her looked her in the eyes and gotten close to her face. The purple-haired woman could see him getting closer to her lips, which made her blush a little from anticipation. Their lips were centimeters apart before he changed course and said in her ear, sorry to disappoint, my dear. He pulled back with a foxy grin. The two Jounin were shocked. Kurinai thought he was actually going to kiss her friend. She let go of a breath she didn't know she was holding. Why was she slightly relieved that he didn't kiss her? I have a suma. She thought. I can't be getting any feelings for Naruto. Right. She shook her head, trying to get her thoughts together. Anko on the other hand felt robbed. She actually wanted him to kiss her, but he didn't. Then the provocative Kanoichi realized she was out teased by Naruto. The two women were caught up in their thoughts when they felt a light tap on their foreheads. They both came back to reality to see Naruto giving them a sly smile. Back on the road of life are we? That's good. Well Anko-chan, I actually may have found a way to get rid of a mark that doesn't belong. The ninja swordsman said, looking at the snake user solemnly. Anko looked a bit startled, but quickly hit it. There was just no way he could take this curse seal off. Her face showed her doubt, and the Jinchuriki looked at her in understanding. It's your choice Anko. If you want to give it a try, then come with me. Naruto offered while walking to a training ground. Both women looked at the man leaving. What if he can't take it off? I don't want to get my hopes up for nothing. Anko said in anger and depression. Kurinai looked at her friend and posed a question to her. Would you rather live life not knowing if he can take it off? The serpent mistress thought about it before running to catch up to the ninja swordsman with her friend following her. They finally reached a clearing in the forest, and Naruto stopped walking. He looked at Anko and said, I see that you wanted to take a chance on me. The purple-haired woman nodded. Naruto took a breath. All right then. I need you to expose the seal. A warning to you though. This may hurt a great deal. Are you sure you trust me? Anko gazed at the man. Yeah, I trust you. If you aren't able to take it off, it'll be alright. She finished with an empty downcast look. Kurinai supported her best friend by gripping her shoulder to let her know that she was there for her. Anko smiled from the gesture. Naruto glared in determination. I won't fail you Anko-chan. He thought fiercely before calming himself in concentration. He moved behind Anko's now exposed shoulder. Ready? The blonde asked calmly. Anko smiled a little. Not really. Kurinai and Naruto laughed lightly. This may feel a bit strange. He announced as his right hand touched the curse seal with became ghost-like, entering the area without piercing her skin. He felt a bundle of sinister chakra in his hand as he gripped it, sending light shivers up his arm. The Takubetsu Jounin felt something oddly calming enter the normally chaotic shoulder area. It was light and a bit warm. Now the tricky part. Naruto said to himself. Kaiyu-chan, bring out some of your chakra. He felt Kaiyu-bi's chakra flow in his chakra system. He controlled it to his intangible arm and to his surprise, it worked. The crimson chakra went to his hand and began to exterminate the curse seal's chakra. Anko growled in pain while holding on to Kurinai's hand for support. Her growls became louder until they were screams of pain. Naruto tuned it out to concentrate on the task at hand. Almost there. He thought. He looked at Kurinai who was trying to help Anko deal with the pain. Alright. Rasu-chan I need your chakra now. He felt the holy being's chakra enter his system and guided it to his now intangible left hand that was entering the curse seal area to raise the final roots of the curse seal. Destroying the last of the curse seal, Naruto took out his right hand and stopped the flow of the nine tails chakra there, willing his hand back to tangibility. His left hand stayed in the area to heal what the two chakras may have damaged. Anko's screams of pain ceased to become low moans of relief and pleasure. This was the most heavenly feeling she ever felt in her life. 
The Jinjutsu specialist watched in fascination as the dark blue-eyed man pulled his remaining hand out. The arm went from bright orange to white and finally become tangible. Banko felt the divine sensation fade from her body. She touched the spot that Arachimaru bit her to give the tainted seal and was shocked to find nothing there. She was filled with so many emotions, she passed out. But before she did, she turned to the whiskered cheek man and thought, I'm finally free. Gurunai caught her limp body before looking at the blonde man in awe. You, you took it off of her. Naruto was still trying to catch his breath. Trying to control your own chakra and tangibility level while guiding two different nature chakras was anything but simple. It wasn't easy you've. The Jinjutsu mistress hugged the former pariah for all he was worth. She's finally liberated Naruto her burden is finally off of her. She said with her voice muffled in his chest. Tears of elation slid down her cheeks as she released him. Thank you. Naruto looked at her in surprise. He didn't expect this reaction out of the black-haired woman. They must have been like sisters the golden-haired man thought. Don't worry about it. The crimson-cloaked man grinned. Though, she may need to lie down and rest for a while for her body to get situated without the seal. Kurinai nodded and picked her friend up. I'll take her to my apartment to keep an eye on her. You're welcome to come. Kurinai said with a bit of hope in her exotic red eyes. The ninja swordsman started to open his mouth to say yes, but Asuma came to mind. I would like to, but I need to restock on my supplies. I have somewhere to be and I don't think I'll be back for a week. The Kaiubi host replied. The Jinjutsu user was slightly saddened but nodded in understanding. Well when you come back, the bandaged woman started. Please stop by. Maybe we could go for a walk. Plus, I'm sure Anko would want to thank you. She giggled. Naruto laughed a little before giving a warm smile. Alright then Kurinai-chan, I'll make sure to do that when I get back. The red-eyed woman nodded. Well, I need to get Anko to her resting place, so we'll see you later, Naruto-kun. The woman said with a slight blush and hurriedly walked away. The ghost ninja nodded and continued his trek to the shinobi shop. She must really be worried for Anko-chan. Naruto thought in his mind. Gathering his thoughts, he recounted everything he needed to replenish for tomorrow. Kurinai, on the other hand, was lost in her head. Any longer and I would have kissed him. She thought, glowing brightly in her face before feeling guilty. I'm betraying Asuma with my thoughts. I can't do that. The Jinjutsu mistress growled at herself in frustration before looking at the sky in sadness. I don't know what to do. Naruto was currently was having a conversation with his tenants on what transpired with the Takibetsu Jounin's curse seal. Since he finally restocked his supplies, he decided to walk around. He would be leaving for a mission tomorrow, so he figured he could relax a little. So you wanted to take off that curse seal off of her? Kaiwubi inquired. Yeah. Thanks for cooperating with me. The Jinchuriki thought gratefully. Amaterasu smiled. He would always go out of his way to help someone in need. So you used my chakra to heal the injuries from the clash of Kaiwu chans and the evil seal's chakra. I must say, I'm impressed. The holy wolf said approvingly. The nine-tailed spirit nodded in agreement with a grin. Ah Naruto-kun, you're finally thinking outside of the box. The red-haired woman said. Naruto smirked. Maybe a little he replied. Well since you are thinking outside of the box, how about we come out and test Kaiyu's theory? The celestial being said with a grin. Naruto paled for a second before returning to his natural skin color. Or how about you two come out and we can just walk around Konoha? The swordsman suggested. Both higher beings smiled in excitement. All right. But what form to take? The nine-tailed vixen asked. Amaterasu said, how about our animal forms? We already used our human forms this morning. Kaiubi nodded in agreement. Naruto shrugged. The dark blue-eyed man turned to an empty street to summon the nine tails out without alerting the villagers. Amaterasu flashed out of the seal in her wolf form wagging her tail. Kaiubi poofed into existence as a small fox with one tail and hopped on her jailer's shoulders, curling herself against his neck. Thank you Naruto-kun. The guardian said. Naruto smiled and scratched behind her ear as a you're welcome, causing her to purr in content. Naruto moved his hand to the white wolf's ears as he started to pet it in content. The wolf rubbed her head into his hand in appreciation. The trio walked back out on the main street and continued walking around. Hey Naruto. The said man turned to see Shikamaru, Chaoji, Kiba, Niji, and Lee walking his way. Naruto grinned. How's it going, everyone? Lee gave a huge smile. It is going great. Watching your youthful flames shine brightly yesterday was inspiring. Lee exclaimed. Kiba laughed heartily. Yeah, watching Sasuke and his team getting their asses handed to was funny. Everyone laughed. Niji chuckled. I was beginning to wonder if nothing would stop my boredom. Watching the Achiha and his team suffer utter defeat greatly entertained me. Naruto grinned foxily. Glad you all enjoyed the show. Shikamaru smiled and asked, so how have you been? The ninja swordsman shrugged. I've been alright. How were you all while I was gone? Chaoji frowned. It wasn't the same without you man. 
the Akamichi said with everyone nodding their heads. Hiba looked at the wolf beside Naruto. He didn't have his partner with him due to him resting after going to the vet earlier, so he couldn't confirm that this was the wolf Akamaru was afraid of. So Naruto, is that the summon you used yesterday? The Inuzuka inquired. The human sacrifice looked at the white-furred animal sitting beside him. Hmm. Why yes it is. Her name is Rasu-chan, and Akami summon. The said wolf looked at Kiba and nodded. The dog associated Nin looked at the blonde in surprise. They said that the wolf contract was lost. Where did you find it? He asked in shock. Naruto suppressed a laugh while Lamadarasu looked at the Inuzuka with mirth. Well, the swordsman started. It was never lost. Shikamaru looked at the whiskered man. So someone was just holding it. Naruto smiled said replied, glad to see your deduction skills haven't dulled. Now the Hayuga was curious. Niji asked who was holding the contract. Naruto stared at Niji. Summons can hold their own contracts, can't they? The crimson cloaked man proposed. Enlightenment reached the group before they leaned in a bit closer, expecting Naruto to share what happened for him to get the summoning contract, but that's a story for another time. The Jinchuriki finished. The group deadpanned and fell in I'm style, while Naruto grinned cheekily. See you all later. It was nice seeing you again. The dark blue-eyed man said and walked away with a Madarasu and Kaiubi. The rest of the day flew by for Naruto with meetings of different people and loved ones. He even went to see his old sensei Aruka, having a good long talk. Afterwards, he hung out with the wolf and the fox in their human forms. He could remember the jealous glares that he was getting and the flirts that those two were receiving. For Kaiubi, it was truly ironic. The people who treated Naruto the worst were the ones that were coming on to her the most. Her host had to calm her down so she wouldn't kill them. He went to the apartment tired and decided to sleep early to be better rejuvenated for tomorrow. Thanking the golden-haired man for the quality time, the fox and wolf beings returned to the seal to get some sleep also. He laid his next set of clothes on the drawer by the bed and climbed into the sleeping mattress with sleep awaiting him. He went unconscious as soon as he hit the mattress. Naruto stood at the main village gate calmly waiting for Tsunade and Tenzo. It was 7.55 am, 5 minutes until they were supposed to leave for the meeting place of the village leaders. The golden-haired man sensed another presence in the area and simply looked in the direction where it was most felt at. The figure came from the trees to reveal the Tora Anbu from yesterday. The masked man chuckled. You found me so fast. The brown-haired man said. Naruto smiled a little and replied, yeah, but if I had been someone else, I don't think I would have, Tora-san. The man unmasked himself and said, it'll be a pleasure working with you Naruto. Call me Yamato. The Jinchuriki smiled and nodded. But steps were heard, and both nins turned to see Tsunade, Shizune, and Jiraiya coming their way. They wore their usual clothes with the exception of Tsunade holding the Hokage robes in her hand. Glad you two are on time. The fire shadow said with a smile. Both escorts nodded. Jiraiya take care of the village. The now younger woman instructed. The toad sage nodded. And Shizune take care of this idiot. Jiraiya sulked while the med nin giggled and replied, we'll do Tsunade sama. Naruto noticed a difference in Jiraiya. His marks were the same, but his body seemed more built. Overall, he looked younger. So how do you feel Iro Jiraiya? The blonde man asked. I feel great. Now it'll be easier to get women. Jiraiya exclaimed in perverted excitement. Tsunade's eye twitched and she asked, now how are you going to do that when you won't have any precious inspiration to help you? Jiraiya paled and quickly fixed his last statement, I mean it'll be easier to get women and men to realize their full potential in the shinobi arts, with me being Hokage. He finished with a nervous laugh. Tsunade smiled cheekily. That's what I thought. Shizune shook her head and looked at Naruto with a content smile. She walked over to him, getting his attention in the process. The black-haired woman hugged the Jinchuriki and said, stay safe, alright. Naruto smiled at her concern and returned the embrace. We will, Shizune-chan. He whispered. The said woman blushed and released him. Tsunade smiled and announced, alright, let's get going. Protect the village Jiraiya. The perverted man nodded and replied, I will to the best of my ability. Shizune waved them goodbye, and the escorts waved back. Tenzo and Naruto donned on their masks and faced the village leader. Swan gave a nod, and the trio took to the trees. As they approached the borders of the wind country Tenzo spoke. Tsunade sama, we are being approached by three high-level chakra signatures. Naruto nodded and grinned beneath his mask. Yeah. I think we know them. The female Sanan nodded. Alright, we'll stop and wait for them. Yamato looked at his leader. Are you sure that's the best course of action? When the female blonde was about to answer, three figures with cloaks came into the clearing. The woman on the left had sandy blonde hair held in four short, spiky ponytails. She wore a black battle kimono with a red sash, accentuating her womanly curves. On her back was a giant battle fan. The man on the right wore a black jumpsuit with a cat-like hood that hid his hair. He wore red war paint on his face and had a huge bandaged article on his back. 
The man in the middle had Kazakiyaj robes held on the back of his gourd. He had blood red hair and a kanji for love on his head above his left eye. He had thin black rings that outlined his eyes, showing his lack of sleep. Ara. How's it going? Naruto spoke, elated to see his friend. The Kazakiyaj smirked. All is well, Shira. The former psychotic man replied underhandedly. The Wind Shadow's escorts looked at the wolf-masked man in major caution. Who are you to address our leader with such familiarity? The battle fan woman asked calmly. Tsunade and Yamato looked at the Yurei and shook their heads. So you didn't tell them who I was? The crimson cloaked man asked in surprise. Gara chuckled, shocking everyone but the swordsman. Well I didn't see why I should. If anything, that is up to you. Naruto smiled in understanding. How respectable, my good friend. The golden-haired man replied. The ninja swordsman looked at the two beside the red-haired man. Well, I guess I could tell you. I'll give you a hint. I was the kid in orange at the Chunin exams. Both siblings thought simultaneously, the little shrimp that defeated Gara. They could never forget that brat. Everyone laughed at the expression on the two Suninin's face. The Kayubi host compassed himself and said, now that you two know, I trust you to keep that a secret. All right. They nodded, still shocked. Thanks. The black masked man said. So you want to travel together? Tenzo asked the cages. Tsunade shrugged. I don't mind. She said. Gara smiled a bit and said, that's fine. With that said, the group took to the trees together. As they made their way to Iron Country Tamari looked at the man who defeated her brother. Naruto. Of all the people who could have been the Shiryure, it was Naruto. She thought in disbelief before chuckling to herself. I never guessed it. He's a lot taller now. The wind mistress flushed a little, unconsciously checking him out. I wonder what he looks like behind that mask. Needless to say, Tamari promised herself to find out what Naruto looks like behind his mask before the cage summit meeting was over. The Hokage and the Kazakiage group reached the snow-covered country in a day and a half's time. They went to their reserved rooms in the hotel before the escorts were given the day to laze around to wait for the rest of the cages to show. During that time, Naruto decided to get to know Yamato. The Kaiubi host learned that his name was really Tenzu, a man that Orochimaru had experimented on as a child that left him Mokuten abilities. They got along great, each exchanging stories of their lives before going over their abilities and what battle combinations they could do. Afterwards, Tenzu left for the bathhouse, leaving Naruto alone. The golden-haired man sat on the roof without his mask on, thinking about the events for tomorrow, before looking at the moon high above his head as the snow calmly fell down. Something troubling you? A raspy voice asked. Naruto didn't turn around, but replied, just thinking about tomorrow, Gara. The red-haired man nodded. I understand. I too feel the ominous ambience of this meeting. The Suna leader said. Can I ask you something? Naruto asked. Gara just sat next to the ninja swordsman. Can you talk to Shukaku? The Kazakiage looked up at the moon. Yes I can. She revealed herself to me after you saved us from Akatsuki's extraction for her. Gara gave a grateful look to Naruto before continuing. It was because of the failed extraction that stopped her insanity streak, forcing her to return to her right state of mind. Gara's fellow Jinchuriki nodded in understanding. So what is her right state of mind? Naruto asked. The wind shadow smiled as sand began to form beside him. Would you like to meet her to find out? Naruto grinned. As long as you don't mind meeting Kaiubi. The Hokage escort said, already drawing blood from his hand and performing half seals. Kuchius. Kaiubi no Kitsun. The Nine Tails host said, putting his left hand beside him. Smoke erupted to show Kaiubi in her human form, giving a calm smile. The sand finally stopped swirling next to Gara to reveal an elegant tan dark blue haired woman with tanuki ears at the top of her head. A golden battle kimono that was adorned with navy blue markings covered the curvaceous being. Her eyes were a dark yellow and with slits, unlike her other form that has the star pupil with the four dots surrounding it. Hey, Gara kun The tanuki spoke in a regal tone. The red-haired man's smile stretched a little more. Hey Shuka-chan. I wanted to introduce you to Naruto, the man who saved you from the extraction. Her eyes shifted from her container to Kaiubi's container. She saw the golden-haired man's features before looking at her fellow guardian. Kaiubi? The blue-haired woman asked. The nine-tailed woman grinned at her. Hey Shukaku-chan. The red-haired woman greeted. Shukaku looked back at the swordsman before giving a pleasant smile. So this is your container? The Tanuki guardian asked. Kaiubi nodded. Naruto said, it's a pleasure meeting you Shukaku-san. Shukaku nodded. Likewise. And please, drop the formalities. Thanks for preventing the Akatsuki taking me from Gara-kun. You're welcome. Naruto replied with a smile. Now Gara, I would like to introduce you to Kaiu-chan. Kaiubi smiled and said, nice to meet you Gara. The Kazakiage nodded and said, same to you Kaiubi-san. The flash of white appeared before revealing a Madarasu sitting in front of Naruto and Kaiubi. Hey Rasu-chan. 
the ninja swordsman said. Hey Ami. The vixen welcomed. The celestial being smiled and replied, Hey Naruto-kun, Kaiubi-chan. Naruto smiled and turned to the tanuki in her container. This is a Amaterasu-chan. The blonde introduced. Shukaku was shocked, and Gara greeted the holy being. What are you doing here? The raccoon dog woman asked in surprise. The wolf woman sighed. It's a long story. As the two guardians and celestial being conversed with each other, Gara was confused about the wolf woman. Her name was familiar, but he couldn't figure out why. I thought you only contained Kai Ubi? Gara asked. Naruto nodded. I do. The blonde man started. To put it short, she's the sun goddess. The red-haired man's eyes widened a bit in surprise. Something major must be arising if she's here. The wind shadow thought aloud. Naruto decided to enlighten him. Because of the Guardian's capture, the elemental nations are falling into darkness. I'm sure you have been receiving reports of these demons killing some of your nins and plundering small villages. Gara nodded. I have. The sand user started. They are growing at an alarming rate. And they are on par with the Akatsuki in terms of power. The Tanuki container finished. Naruto sighed and laughed quietly to himself. This is more trouble than what it's worth. The golden-haired man said. His fellow jailer silently agreed. I'm glad you found someone Gara. Naruto said out of the blue. Gara was surprised from the sudden conversation change from the whiskered man. I will admit I didn't think it would work out for me, but imagine my surprise when she returned those feelings. The San Jinchuriki said with a small smile. The dark blue-eyed man quietly chuckled to himself. Naruto turned his gaze from the moon to the red and white-haired women, smiling and talking with Shukaku. The ghost nin shook his head rather dejectedly. Gara pat his brother on the shoulder, startling him. It'll work itself out. The crimson-cloaked man said, sometimes I wonder. The human sacrifices and their prisoners continue to talk for a little while longer before going back to their hotels to rest for tomorrow. When the two young adults in Churiki went to bed they both thought, tomorrow is going to be a long day. What if Naruto has harem get banished from Konoha? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.